Hey guys, welcome. It's time for the Wolf Den Podcast. Everybody Woo! sit down, gather around. Special Nintendo Direct Edition. Bram, 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 bram. Who would have guessed today would be the day that a Nintendo Direct happened? And it's a good thing it did because there wasn't a lot of whole news go- that happened this past week. Good. And then Nintendo comes along and is like, don't worry, guys. Not only do we have Direct, we got a banger of a Direct. It's the best Direct we've had. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had a Direct in a while. Yeah. But this is the best direct we've had in uh, quite some time. Mm-hmm. I, I want. I, I was thinking about bringing up a list of like all of the game reveals from the past directs. I've been That's very whelmed from the yeah. past directs. Uh, this, I there was a lot here that yeah. I think a lot of a lot of. I think everybody could be excited about a lot of things here. Mm-hmm. Willow Davis in the chat says, "I just took an edible. Delay the show an hour. <laughs> no, in an hour. No. That's when it'll get good. Yeah." Uh, I think your chair is in it your is. chair. It is. I got you. I got you. Anthony Mele, thank you for the 100 bits. I was going to say just toss it. Oh, that's fine. That works. Okay. Uh, all right. And Funyuns are tasty. Thanks for the 16 months. It was nice being excited about the direct for a change. I know. There were a lot of good things. Yeah. And I could care less about turning my switch on. Like, I know. I, like, I, like, I, I turn no my, desire. I turned my switch on for the first time, like, God knows how long. But yeah. congrats, Nintendo. You've given me reasons to uh, actually probably play it. Yeah, and there are a lot of good reasons that we'll get into. Uh, Before we get into it, though, I okay. have to give you something. Okay. Now, I was at mom and dad's house last week, and my daughter, your niece, okay, uh, was in the basement, and she got into some of your things. And she found this guy. Okay. And... This guy. Okay. And I need them out of my house. (laughs) All right. Because she won't stop making me put them on. (laughs) All right. Now I'm going to warn you, the horse head, either it shrunk or my head got really big. Your head's pretty big. It doesn't fit anymore. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for this. You're welcome. I appreciate it. There you go. This is not in my house anymore. (laughs) All right. All right. So anyway, uh... Nintendo Direct. Yes. Let's get right into that. Okay. Uh, we're. I guess is this in alpha, is this in chronological order? Uh, this is. Uh, I think it's in chronological order. Yeah, because it opened with uh Mario Luigi Brothership. Yes. Yes. Terrible name. It's. <laughs> I get a deviant art name if I ever heard. One. I get what they're going for with I can't, it. I can't see out of this. I thing. know. <laughs> Podcast listeners, it's a bird mask. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the horse head and mask. The horse head mask. Um, I get what they're going for with it. Like, it's a play on Mothership and their brothers. The they brothers. are? Yeah, you believe that? <laughs> also, I heard that this is the first time ever that there was a Mario game where they spell out brother in the title. Yes, because they've always just been bros. They've always been bros. Now I guess they kind of because what are they going to call it? Mario Luigi Bros Ship? That's a weird one. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> that sounds much worse. Going to be a lot of fan art about this as well. I mean, there's fan I'm art saying. about all the Mario Luigi games. It's a Mario Luigi game. It's one of the RPG style games uh, that usually are on the, the portable handheld, but since the Switch is a both system, it's <laughs> it's a both system. Uh, so this is very cool. Yeah. It looks really good. I was very confused because they showed that it was Mario. I mean, it was obviously Mario and Luigi. Yeah. And they showed early on in the trailer that it is Mario and Luigi, but uh, it was unclear if it was a remake. Yeah, I thought or it was what. gonna be a remake because like it seems like a remake to me. I like I don't play these games, but like this looked. I don't, this is gonna sound, this is gonna sound like harsh, but it sound, it looked basic enough that it could have been the first game. Yeah, you know, uh, it has a specific specific style. Even though this is, we've never seen Mario and Luigi look this modern. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of this trailer, I looked up what the first Mario and Luigi game was called because I was like, was it called just Mario and Luigi? Because they show. The logo for just Mario and yeah. Luigi in the very beginning. So I was like, oh, it's a remake of the first game, I guess. But it no, was the first Superstar Ma- Saga, right? Superstar yeah. Saga. So it couldn't have been that. Yeah. So then at the end of the trailer, they reveal that this is a brand new game, Mario yeah. and Luigi Brothership. And it looks awesome. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to play it because I'm not that huge on the RPG uh, Mario games. Yeah. I liked uh, some of the Paper Mario games. Yeah. Uh, but. 
I feel like maybe I would like this. I think yeah. people really liked the art, the 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 Marion Louise. Yeah, movie. people genuinely like um, specifically the writing and the sense of humor. It's like very funny and very un Nintendo in a lot of ways. This is one of those situations where everybody wants a, a new Mario RPG, and I'm like, hey man, there's all of these great Mario RPGs yeah. that you're just not playing, and they're all on Game Boy Advance and yeah. DS and stuff. <laughs> so uh, this might. Uh, be one of the best Mario RPGs to come out in yeah. the past uh since the last fucking Mario and Luigi game. Yeah. The uh, the remake of Super Mario RPG, I didn't like it that much. Right. So maybe this will be better. Maybe. It looks great and this is the first game that they show you. Yes. And then they never talk about it again. <laughs> so that just sets you up for how much of a banger this direction yeah. is going to be. This was a good this is this is a good show folks. Number two, I forgot about this. This yeah. is, you know, why? Because this was uh, rumored already. Like, yeah, we already they, well, knew this yeah, was this was. I think this was full, straight on announced, and now they're actually showing you gameplay footage of it. It's a Nintendo World Championships NES Edition uh, co collection of speed running uh, challenges. There are also modes that put you head to head with other players in an attempt to be the last one standing as you make your way through the challenges. Yes, sir. Uh, they even showed. A part where you have to beat the original Mario Brothers with yes. warp, warp pipes. Yeah. So literally, you are just doing a speed run race. Championship yeah. best nine? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you can't see it on screen. It says the best run there was nine minutes. We can we can crush that. You know, they probably had to put a number there. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, let's just make it nine minutes. And then, like, once people start doing it in, like, four minutes and shit. Yeah. Then, like... So I am not well-versed in a lot of these games. Yeah. Uh, but I will play this a lot and become well-versed in, in yeah. all of these games. This is right up my alley. I'm, I'm, oh, uh, yeah. I, I like speedrunning these types of games. I am not a, a good speedrunner. Mm -hmm. I I, I'm, like, a casual. I like to uh, get the records on some... Uh, Mario Maker levels. Yeah, I like to try to beat the original Super Mario Bros. as fast as I can. I'm not fucking uh, uh, not anybody special. Right. I'm not fucking. Uh, You're not the wizard. Yeah. What the hell is the guy's name? The wizard. Nifsky. I'm not Nifsky. Oh. Uh, but uh, this will be really fun. Now, you're competing against. I think it said 20 other ghost players yes so you're not competing it's not direct live directly with other people no it's taking their ghost data and putting you against them so i think that's kind of lame but at the same time when you think about it how would you even know the difference well i think there are some modes are direct head to head but like i think when you're doing like the mario brothers speed run or like some of the speed runs it will be ghost data Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm pretty sure there's some of the some of the games are head to head. I'm not sure. Cause why? What? What? What would the? Well, what it? They showed off the Mario. This one, the Mario Two. A uh, speed run. That's the screens are side by side. That leads me to believe it's head to head. Well, again, what's if you're not affecting their gameplay at all? What's what's the difference so, between it, it being live or it being ghost data? I mean, there's an extra, like, thrill of it being live, you know? Like, the the immediacy is right there. If it's ghost data... Yeah, but you, then, my then, point is you wouldn't even know if it's live or not. But if you, if you know going into it it's ghost data, mm -hmm. then that means, like, you can adjust yourself accordingly. You can even try again. If it's head-to-head, -head, that, me that means there's an immediacy to it. That means that you have to be number one right then and there. Because you're directly competing against somebody. Yeah, but again, you would still never know if they're if it's live or not, other than them telling you is ghost data. Because well, you're not affecting their gameplay at all. It's just a video that's playing in front of you. Well, it's you're not if you're not directly you're not directly affecting their gameplay, but you're still directly competing against yeah, somebody. And you're directly competing against a ghost <laughs> player. But it's different between directly competing against ghost data and directly competing against a live person. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It, it the feeling is different. Yes. But the actual gameplay is unchanged, is my is my argument. Okay. I don't like it as much. I don't like the idea of playing against a ghost versus playing against an actual person, but uh 
there's no difference in gameplay. Right. And Nintendo's online is so bad mm -hmm. that if ghost data is the way we have to do it in order for it to run smoothly, then yeah. fine. Uh, Super Mario 35 and, I mean, the, the fan game Mario Royale, uh, you were competing in speedrunning uh, the original Super Mario Brothers. Both of those games had you affecting the other players. Right. So just like Tetris 99, yeah. like you can you could throw garbage t towards the other players. Mm -hmm. uh, so you were playing live against other people. But in this, if you're not directly affecting the other players, uh, I don't like that idea, but yeah. uh, I guess it doesn't matter that much. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to be able to directly affect the other players. I just want mario royale in an official capacity mm -hmm. this seems like the closest we're gonna get as of right now yeah i mean i'm sure mario royale will, you know no mario sorry mario royale is the fan game i'm thinking of mario 35 yeah. never mind. i mean never but, mind but mario 35 was the closest i could get yeah. to mario royale so now this is the closest i can mm -hmm. get to mario royale uh i think i'm gonna like this a lot so uh july 18th is when it comes out that's yes. when i'll be playing it and giving it a shot and probably streaming it Next fairy tale, fairy tale two, Koei Tecmo's um take on the anime fairy tale, real time strategy game. You'll take on enemies in collaborative battles. It's out this winter. Cool. Is this not uh the, the, the thumbnail looked like uh, uh My Hero Academia? It is not. It's a different anime. Okay. Fantasia, Fantasian. I saw some weebs going crazy about this. This is from the creator of Final Fantasy, Hironobu Sakaguchi. Turn-based role-playing game where you take on an evil guy. <laughs> evil guy. An evil guy Ooh. that wants to destroy all mankind. Interdimensional game launches this holiday. Cool, man. Yeah. Uh, it, first of all, looks not the best. <laughs> Second of all, not my thing. I'm not, no. I'm not an RPG, a JRPG guy. No. Um, but hey, if you are, this is from, this is from the, the, the granddaddy of them. So there you go. Uh, Switch Sports is getting an update. Uh, basketball. You can play basketball in this game now. Uh, so I saw this trailer. Mm -hmm. I saw they were playing basketball. I was like, oh, cool, basketball. And I kind of tuned it out. Then I saw on Twitter, Nintendo Switch Sports brings basketball. And I forgot what basketball was for a second. <laughs> <laughs> the word basketball just confused me. I was like, wait, that wasn't basketball. Wait, no, that is basketball. <laughs> It's the one we remember Space Jam. Yeah, I thought it was the one with the bat <laughs> for a second. So I was a little confused. I was like, wait, oh, I don't remember, I don't remember the orange ball. That's a different game. I hope Dad is watching. Oh, good lord! Uh, um, it looks good. I mean, I'm. I was so hyped on Nintendo Switch Sports when it was coming out, and then I played it, and I very, very quickly lost interest. So this is not enough to bring me back to it. I'm curious how it works though, because like the demo looked like it's all like motion controls, like you're just flicking the wrist and it, like with one Joy-Con. But basketball is a game that requires a lot of movement. So it like, kind of just look like jump shots. Were people even moving? Yeah, there's like actual oh, yeah, there's game, moving. Yeah, it's actual traditional two-on-two -two gameplay. So like, how is that working? It's like, are they are they moving on their own? It looks like they're moving on their own. That's crazy. I mean. The soccer game, you move around, and then you flick okay. your wrist to, like, shoot. Uh, this might just be them moving on the it also oh, looks there's, like there's also jump shot yeah. competitions. Because it, it also looks like you have to dribble the ball yourself by, like, flicking the Joy-Con. That sucks. That's annoying. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that... You can't dribble the ball and move at the same time. That would be crazy. To, uh, to control but, the thumbstick and dribble the ball. But that's, like, how basketball works. I, I'm not saying I am happy with this yeah <laughs> i'm just saying if the mechanic is to dribble the ball and move with your thumb yeah. that would be really annoying mm -hmm. uh there's people in the chat who somebody said are you a console guy is bob not a console guy anymore i have been favoring the steam deck more uh these days um i still like my xbox yeah i don't like the playstation 5 that much i still like my switch uh, they gotta put some games on there though, because yeah. right now it's so much easier for me to play on my PC or my Steam Deck. Uh, I will bust out my Switch like I did just now. Whenever they put new games on there, mm -hmm. and they put Perfect Dark on here, I'm gonna fucking play Perfect Dark on here. Um, 
Someone, uh, yeah, he used to make content more around Switch, Xbox, and PS5. Yeah, well, now I do it on fucking other things that I'm interested in. Yeah. You, make something interesting, and I'll make a video about it. You, if you can play Sega Genesis games on your toaster oven, that'll be Bob's next yes. video. <laughs> yes. Anyway, this game looked interesting. Yeah. Mio Memories in Orbit. Now, when I saw this, uh, a little bit of me thought this was Hollow Knight. Definitely has that vibe going. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. Is this why Silk Song took so long? It's It looks crazy now? Yeah. Uh... Did they show combat in this? I know hey, they show gameplay. Yeah, I know they show gameplay. Right there. But it's all like this kind of... Oh, they did show combat. Because I was going to say, there's a lot of like just walking in a beautiful looking environment. It's platforming and it looks like the combat is platforming. Yeah. Like you, like you platform off of enemies yeah. and stuff. Which so, is cool. I yeah. don't know if I'm ever going to get to playing it. I hope there's a demo because then, yeah. then I'll try it. But it looks pretty cool. There's just so... Like I love platformers. There's just so many games like that. I know. <laughs> this one just looks really pretty. Yeah. All right. All right. Next, uh, Disney's Illusion Island is more Illusion it's Island. It's a stuff. it's a new update for it. I've heard this game is a very good beginner's Metroidvania. Okay. So I didn't expect it to be a Metroidvania. Yeah, it's it's, a, it's one of those. So if you if you never played a Metroidvania before, like this is this is your chance. It's got it's got the mouse in it. <laughs> Our Lord now, and Savior. This one's interesting because I was looking at Apple Arcade last night with Hannah trying to mm -hmm. find some games. She was like, "Are there any phone games?" And I was like, <laughs> "There's so many phone games." Uh, and then I was like, what about Hello Kitty Island Adventure? Unironically, I hear this is good. It's yeah. like a Hello Kitty's Animal Crossing. And weirdly, here it is, a coming to the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Uh, fun fact, the name Hello Kitty Island Adventure debuted in a, the South Park World of Warcraft episode however many years ago. It wasn't a real game then. But, you know, because time is a flat circle, it's a real game now. That's, yes. I was yes. like, I knew that. I, I couldn't pinpoint where it was uh, yeah. predicted. So now South Park predicts everything, folks. We're going to be pooping out our mouths before we know it. Looney Tunes Wacky World of Sports. This game looks like ass. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm so disappointed because I grew <laughs> up with the Looney Tunes. I love the Looney Tunes. The Looney Tunes are, you know, one of the greatest basketball teams of all time. And, like, they just this, this game's going to die. This game's going to die because, like... It, not only does it look bad, but like... Why doesn't it look like Space Jam? Why, like, Warner Brothers does nothing with the Looney Tunes ever, and like, they just expect this to be, you know, to be hit with the kids? This is possibly the worst cel-shaded graphics I've ever seen. And then, th and then when Porky Pig talks, there's like a weird echo. I don't know is if there? this will come through. Let's see. Oh yeah, there's like this weird like. That's reverb. weird. Like, I don't what know. Happened? Like that didn't happen with bugs. Yeah. Like what the fuck? And yeah, know. yeah, the cell shading is horrible. It, I'm, it's a, yeah, I'm like surprised, but that's like definitely some of the worst cell shading in the last few years. Because like you would think that's like everybody that's the easiest one to do. Yeah. So it it, it looks it looks very bad. Uh. Anyway, next Among Us. They get uh, new crew members and imposter roles. So if you're still playing Among Us, you keep playing it. Good, good for Among Us. Yeah. Pharma, far, Farmasia. Farm, Farmag, Farmaga. Farmaga. The Trump farming <laughs> simulator. <laughs> Uh, Felicia dad, Felicia's dad is a realm of monsters where a guy named Ten needs to take on a big army. Uh, it, the game is a farming simulator where you raise monsters to help you battle. Coming into the Nintendo Switch November first. Thank you so much yeah. for making this. Uh, everybody was waiting for a farming for a game where you play as Vera Farmiga, the yes, actress. Exactly. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. This is just an HD uh, re-release of the Wii game Donkey Kong Country Returns that everybody except Bob liked. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. Oh, the Wii game. Okay. The Wii game, yeah. So wait, what do we have on Switch now? We got Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. That's the second game. And is that it? And now I we have this? so. Now we have this. Okay. All right. Yeah. So wait, Tropical Freeze was after this? Yes. Like, direct... Is that the only ones? Yeah, it's this and then Tropical Freeze. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought there were more than that. Yeah. No, because there's a 3DS version of oh. this game. And this port is going to have, like, the extra features from the 3DS version. That's kind of cool. Never going to play it. Uh, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D Remake. Of course. 
What a great name. Uh, this is a, a remake of Dragon Quest III, um, and it is the first in a trilogy because they're also going to release Dragon Quest One and Two in this HD 2D format uh, next year. I did they say next year? I yeah. thought they said twenty twenty six, twenty twenty five. Okay, it does yeah. say twenty. So Dragon Quest One, Two, and Three form a trilogy. Uh, Dragon Quest Three is actually the first entry in the trilogy. So what they're doing is they're re-releasing that game first, and then they're going to release Dragon Quest One and Two next year. This one part in the trailer made me chuckle like this look at that riveting <laughs> gameplay <laughs> i'm so happy they re released remember, this in 2d hd it's a 1988 game yeah so it's gonna look silly yeah but this is hd now yeah it's, it's hd 2d bob come on speaking of bad looking games uh we're in the middle of the direct. We yeah. got a lot to shit on here. <laughs> uh, this is Funko Fusion, which exists already, right? We've heard of this game before. Uh, yes. I've heard of this game before, but I, I don't think I've actually seen it. And I'm looking at it. <sighs> and man, I was watching. Kind, I, I think I saw on TikTok a clip of Kind of Funny. And Andy Cortez said, this looks like you got it in a cereal box. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> this looks like somebody looked at Lego Dimensions from like 100 years ago and was like, that but not timely at all. Yeah, they want to do Lego. Yeah, well, they have such riveting, you know, top quality, you know, hip with the kids franchises like Battlestar Galactica and uh, Jaws and Knight Rider. Yeah, I'm interested how that works. Like Lego is able to like get other franchises to like play along. Yeah. Funko was able to skirt around everything because they made everything bobbleheads. So, but, I, but then when they got big enough, they got real licenses, I assume, yeah, because yeah. you need a real license so, to these characters. Ju judging by all the franchises that are in this game, Back to the Future, Battlestar Galactica, Child's Play, uh, Hot Fuzz, Jaws, Jurassic Park, uh, these are all properties owned by Universal Studios. Right, right. So that's where the... Uh, you know the multiverse aspect comes into it it's all universal that makes studios. sense yeah. that makes sense uh otherwise i don't think fucking the other franchises that they made bobbleheads of would would have uh played along they needed yeah. one big franchise to play but along. like i'm looking at the list and like aside from five nights at freddy's and megan like i don't think any of these things are like relevant with more modern day audiences oh, no. like you know yes everybody loves back to the future but like is your target audience which is probably 10 year olds gonna be into back to the future you know don't nobody likes masters of the universe except dudes in their 40s it's a fact i'm sorry no Come this at is, me, masters of the universe fans dudes in their 40s are gonna buy this for their for their kids yeah, and then the kids are not going to want to play because their kids don't give a shit about Masters right of the Universe. They're going to go right back onto Roblox and Fortnite. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this right now. This is a game for kids. Why is The Thing one of the properties in this? Have oh, you yeah. seen The Thing? Uh, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. I forgot about this game. Yes. Uh, it's still coming out June 27th. Uh, it, looks it looks good. It looks good. It didn't looks finish fun. Luigi's Mansion 3. Kind of upset that I didn't. Well, there's still time. Yeah. You got to beat that one before you play this one. Of course. Or else you won't know what's going on. Yeah. The new Denpa Men. So this seems like a first party game. It, but it's not, apparently. It's not? Because they said in the trailer, this is launching as an, on the Nintendo Switch as a timed console exclusive. You know what that told? That told me that this is going to mobile. You that's think what that's what it, it means? That's what I took from that. Okay. Because this seems like a mobile type game. This looks like what... Those little street pass games were. I know. It looks exactly like that. Yeah. So I'd like to know who developed. Yeah. Who's developing this. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be interested in this at all. Um, I wa when I first saw this, I thought, oh, Tomodachi life. What I want to know is the, the, whole, the whole YouTube chat on, on the, the Nintendo live stream mm -hmm. was screaming they wanted Tomodachi life. Right. And right before... The thing went live on Twitter. I saw people talking about Tomodachi Life. Mm -hmm. What YouTuber said fucking something about Tomodachi Life that got everybody thinking that that was going to be in this Nintendo Direct? I don't know. Because it it wasn't. It, did, yeah. it ended up not happening. Um, 
Next, Metal Slug Attack Reloaded. This is weird. This is like This not... is like a... They said it's a tower defense game, which is weird because... It's side-scrolling. De <laughs> yeah, tower defenses aren't side-scrolling. So this Metal Slug Attack Reloaded is coming to Nintendo Switch. That's yeah. all it says. Yeah, it's... Uh, oh, it's... today, apparently. Well, it says on Tuesday. Yeah. I think that means today. Um, so hashtag not my Metal Slug. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is a weird-looking one. Yeah. Uh, okay. Darkest Dungeon 2. I never played the first one. No. Uh, f apparently it's out already. <laughs> so, oh, no. July 15th. Never mind. It's still yeah, June. Never mind. Uh, and then a big Nintendo Switch Online update. Yes. Uh, this is Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack. So if you have that, the more expensive subscription, for the Game Boy Advance, you get links, uh, a link to the past plus four swords adventure. So and Metroid Zero Mission. So I was confused because it said The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past Four Swords. Yes. And I was like, wait, I thought it was called The Legend of Zelda The Four Swords. No. So originally when they ported A Link to the Past to the GBA, they mm -hmm. included the Four Swords adventure, like the original Four Swords, and then Four Swords spun off to become its own thing. Oh, so yeah. that's a different game. That's a different the game. The Legend of Zelda Four Swords is a different game. Yes. This okay. this is a Legend of Zelda: The Link to the Past Four Swords. <laughs> so, are you playing a Link to the Past with four people? No, it's a different game altogether. So, when you want to play with four people, you're playing a different game. Yes, but then I, can I also play a Link to the Past? Yeah, it's two. When you boot up the game, you pick: Do you want to play a Link to the Past or do you want to play Four Swords? Okay, that's what it is. Does that make sense? It's like yes, but then this title screen says "A Link to the Past: Four Swords." Yes, because that's the, <laughs> the, the that's the name of this particular okay. game. It's like it's like how the Mario games on Game Boy Advance are Super no, Mario World no, no, no. Four. It's more Mario like, Three. <laughs> it's more like uh, Super Mario Brothers 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Except that there's also a game called Bowser's Fury, and it's right. a, a completely different game. Well, <laughs> that's what I mean. That's yes, what it is. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And then Metroid Zero Mission, the best version of the original Metroid game. Yeah, I've never played Metroid it's Zero It's very Mission. good. We have it. I've never yeah. touched it. So uh, maybe that'll get me to actually beat the original Metroid. Yeah. The problem is we have Metroid well, Fusion, and that game fucking rules. So yes. why would I want to well, play anything else? This game... Also fucking rule. Pause it because we got to get into that in a second. Um, this game also fucking rules. It takes a lot of elements from Metroid uh, Fusion, adds it to this. But also, too, when you beat the Metroid part of it, there's a whole extra game. There's a z that, That's where the Zero Mission comes in. Oh. They added so much more to it. Because the original Metroid is only like, what, three hours? And then they added a whole other three-hour game to it oh, at the end. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. So that's that's reason enough to play Zero Mission. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll try it. Now, in addition to these two games, you got uh, they added Nintendo 64 games. However, they are not included in the standard Nintendo 64 Switch Online app. They are included in the all-new Nintendo 64 Switch Online Mature app yeah so that was a thing in japan yes uh there's no reason for them to do that in america right i don't think i don't think there's a reason for them to do it anywhere i think they only did that here because they did it in japan already and i guess they figure keep yeah. keep all the all the mature games away from the kids yeah i mean, I think there was a reason why they did it in japan, yeah but well because in japan i think the rating is 18 plus and mm -hmm. that probably comes with other regulations right um but anyway I I wanted to get this for a picture for Twitter before I uh, started the, the stream, mm. and I couldn't find it. I, yeah. I, I booted up uh, the Nintendo 64 app, and uh, Perfect Dark wasn't there. Yeah. And if I hadn't already seen people playing Perfect Dark today on Twitch, mm -hmm. I would have just been like, oh, I guess it's not there yet, and waited. Yeah. But then you told me, well, first of all, I saw the people playing it, and then you told me it was in a different app. And, yeah. And so I couldn't find the other app. I went to the Nintendo Switch Online section on the home yeah, screen. I, it's not, all of the other apps are there, but the mature one is not. Yeah. Then I went to, what did I do? You had to go to the eShop. Yeah, I went to the eShop. So and then I finally the found the page, but it was also buried in the eShop. Yeah. It, I, I had to go to the Nintendo Direct section of the eShop yeah. and then find the mature thing. Yeah, there it is. Oh, did you download it? 
I didn't download it. Uh -huh. I, I just took a... I was in a hurry, so I right. took a picture of, of well, the I'll, store page. I'll download it for you. Oh, thank you so I, I want to see something. I want to see if you download it. Does that add it to the uh, Switch Online? Oh, homepage? good that's, that's what I'm curious about. Because I did the same thing. I went to the Switch Online icon here, mm -hmm. and I just didn't see it. And then I had to go into the eShop and look for it. Right. So... So... There's only two games in there. Yes. And it's, uh, it's two it's games that they announced today. Yes. It's Perfect Dark, which we already said, um, and the first Torok Dinosaur Hunter game, which is already available on Switch uh, yeah. due to the Night Dive Studios port. So that is interesting. Yeah. It, I think Torok was the first N64 game to be on the Nintendo Switch. Yes. Because of that Night Dive Studios port. Mm -hmm. Torok not a not good no and i'll be <laughs> honest the n64 one on switch online probably the worst version to play because yeah. it probably doesn't have like uh, modern controls yeah so uh i mean try it if you want but yeah. i don't think uh, you're gonna like it all right no they don't add the mature to the wow okay yeah. that's you gotta go through a couple of hoops yeah to, to I mean, actually get they the really don't game. want kids to find this thing does this mean Conker's Bad Fur Day is coming soon? I so, highly doubt they would do that. Well, I don't know because they added all the rare games to Switch Online or as many as they could. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft seems to be like, I, we don't care anymore. Here, hey, here's Conker. <laughs> Go nuts. I feel like the licensing would be cool with it. Yeah, I feel like there's nothing wrong with that. I yeah. feel like I can't imagine Nintendo announcing, "Hey, everybody, go play Conquer's Bad Fur." Well, N Nintendo didn't want to publish it originally, mm -hmm. you know, back in when it first came out. Even though they were publishing all of Rare's games, Rare had to publish it themselves, and that was like the first time they ever did that. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, Perfect Dark. Uh, we love Perfect Dark. Yes, Perfect Dark is great. I've been waiting for this to come. I'm very surprised it did. I thought they would uh, kind of uh, hold this out for yeah. a while. I'm curious if this will have the uh, more modern control scheme that like they added to GoldenEye. I would imagine so. It does have widescreen. Yes. So, but didn't the original have a weird widescreen? It had a weird widescreen. One. Maybe yeah. it's just oh. kind of taken that. Maybe. I hope it does have the modified control scheme. Yeah. I like Perfect Dark the way it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recommend everybody give it a try. However, when I'm watching, I watched Jackson play it today. He fucking hated it. I know. I have <laughs> I, and I was playing, I got, I was raised not to be a bully, but God, do I want to bully him for not liking perfect dark? <laughs> so, uh, in the chat, uh, sir Griffith, I got to come up with a better way to say your name. Uh, says perfect dark had a 97 on Metacritic. I guess that means back in the day. Yeah. It was incredible back in the yes. day. Back, you have to remember that back in the day, there weren't... The shooter landscape had not much to go Especially on. Especially on console. Yeah. This yeah. was the best... Co back then, we... Like, I liked shooters back then. Mm -hmm. And I was, was on a hunt to find games that just controlled well. Just mm -hmm. first-person games that just controlled well. Because there were a lot of first-person games that just felt terrible and that made the whole game bad yeah and believe it or not this was the best that we had at the time yeah um so i was actually playing it uh on an emulator uh like two days ago mm -hmm. uh when i was testing the rg cube and i always just plow through the first level the first level is a great uh barometer for how well emulation works on these handhelds because uh perfect dark is already hard to emulate yeah uh, n64 games are hard to emulate and when you get to the basement of the first level, which you can go to very quickly, uh, there's a lot of enemies. Mm -hmm. So it's really putting a lot of stress yeah. on the Nintendo 64 emulator. Uh, and I realized if I hadn't played that a million times already, I would have no fucking idea how to beat that <laughs> level. Because the level is... It's really easy. You just go all You're the way down. You're just going downstairs. Yeah. But you can't go down the stairs you got to go to the elevator and the elevator goes up it goes down yeah. it goes up and then it goes back down and then you got to find the secret exit which is behind a wall yeah that looks like it's just a wall but it's a door and there's another area up top that also looks like a wall but it's a door so there's a lot of shit you got to navigate and that's and keep in mind this is back in the day when like the objectives were different depending on what difficulty you were playing on. Yeah. So if you're playing on easy, all you have to do is go downstairs. That's it. Yeah, but and there's still 
a hidden door to right. exit the but level. But imagine you're playing on anything higher than that when yeah. you have to do other things, like you have to find the special necklace to unlock the door to get to the... Yeah, I would recommend, if you want to play this game, just play it on the easiest difficulty, yeah. which is Agent. Yeah. Yeah. Just play it on the easiest difficulty. Mm -hmm. Don't even bother. Unless you end up liking it, then go back and play yes. it on, on the higher it's, difficulty. It's endlessly replayable, honestly. Yeah. Spoilers? No, I no, mean, come no. on. No, first level doesn't count. Yeah. There's so much to this game. Yeah. I think it's incredible. Yeah. Also, I understand why people would have a really hard time with the controls. I was fucking born in this. Yeah. So I <laughs> got no problem with these yeah. controls. But uh, hopefully it has the updated controls. Yes. I don't know. It does have widescreen, though. So yeah. that is really cool to see. And then there's Turok. <laughs> And it's Turok. I mean, Turok was surprisingly popular during the N64 era. We were never into it. No, we even rented it like a we, couple times. Yeah, I was, was like, like, I just couldn't do it. You know it. what the problem was? Because we had other games that were way better. <laughs> that, and that was one of those first person shooters that for some reason they decided the C buttons are going to be your movement and the analog stick was going to look. Right. You know, which, I remember that when I was testing the Hori uh, N64 controller. Yeah. I was like, wait, this is how you moved in this game? Yeah. This game also, one of the reasons why I love this game so much is because it has co-op. So it's yes. just like Goldeneye, but you can play split screen co-op with another person. Yeah. So you can play through the whole game. It's the regular campaign. You just have a whole other person playing with you. Yeah. And I think it's incredible for that, especially if you're playing with somebody who knows the game already. The game will be a lot easier. It also has another cool feature called counter-op uh, multiplayer. Where one person plays as Joanna Dark and the other person plays as one of the enemy NPCs. Oh, yeah. It's just a random one. Yeah, you have to like hunt down Joanna Dark and like take her out. Uh you have you infinitely respawn. Joanna doesn't. Oh. So, so that's awesome. Yeah. That is the type of game mode you'd want without split screen. Yeah. So this game does exist in other forms. It's on the Xbox uh, 360, and it's on you know Xbox One and Series X. I yeah. think it's on PC as well through Rare Replay. Is, is it on PC? See, here's I'll, the thing. I'll look it up. I was told by Gathalian, who's another Twitch streamer. Yeah. He told me the PC port's way better because it has better online. Because okay. you are play if you're playing this online, you're playing on the shitty Nintendo Switch online. Right stuff and we know that's not that great but to be fair you're probably playing with somebody else who you know has good internet so like it's probably gonna be fine yeah um but those other versions that we're talking about are 1080p they got uh yeah a freaking, the, uh, the xbox version has modern controls it's got a control scheme to emulate call of duty it's got a control scheme to emulate halo if that's what you're more and into. you don't have to do split screen and yes. in this you it looks like you're forced to do split screen yeah uh so that game mode would probably be better played on one of the other ports. Mm -hmm. uh, that way you don't, you can't screen look. It is not on PC. Uh, it might be unofficially on PC then. It probably is. It probably is unofficial. Yeah. Interesting. So anyway, if you have an Xbox, play it on Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, PC port as a community decomp project. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. There you go. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad that this exists because it's a lot more accessible yes. to a lot more people. It'll be yes. way easier for people to play. Okay, and I will play that. Yeah. Uh, Phantom Brave, the lost hero. Wh what the hell is this? Uh, Minora is on a journey to save her friend Ash in Phantom Brave, the lost hero, which looks super cute, their words, uh, and it's coming to Switch next year. Cool. Next game, Marvelous Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics. This is huge yes, news. Yes, this is big deal. Uh, this is, what is it? It's like all six Marvel vs. Capcom fighting games and the Punisher side strolling beat em up thrown in there for good measure. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know why they always lump that in. I, I guess, think I guess because, where else are they going to put it? Yeah, I mean, these are all the Capcom made games, so they're like, might as well. Yeah. Um, this is cool. This is great that this is actually happening. You know, it's it's very hard to do these things because Capcom always loses the Marvel license and they seem to lose it regularly. Yeah. They never re-up it, but now like they finally re-upped it and we can play all these games. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is one of the best fighters of all time. Yes. And it was put on digital storefronts uh, over a decade ago and then taken off of digital storefronts yes. over a decade ago. Mm -hmm. It's been 10, over 10 years 
since uh, we've been able to purchase Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Yes. So and that's a shame. And I, I'm assuming this is going to have online multiplayer. Yes, uh, with rollback net code. They made it. Oh, they did say. Yeah. Wow. Now people are going to love this. On screen, you see like gameplay footage of Marvel vs. Capcom. You see the the pillar boxing on the side. Yeah. The Xbox 360 version and like the version that came out like over a decade ago and whatnot mm -hmm. was full widescreen. Ooh. So I don't know what version of Marvel vs. Capcom this is going to be. If this is going to be the, a straight port of the original version or if it's going to have any of the features from the 360 version. So, I'd imagine it's going to be more of a straight port. That's interesting because one, why not just make it the widescreen one? Yeah. And two, there's these, they show some features where you like go through an archive and look at art and stuff. Yeah. That was in the 360 port. Okay. Wasn't it? I think so. I'm pretty sure it was. So yeah. I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, this is just the 360 port. But now that you're saying there's no uh, widescreen. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like we'd have to like go through the, because they're adding all these other features, like one button combos, um, quick save and quick reload. So they're adding one all these other features. Combos? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So why not like add the features from that version? Arkham in the chat says no cross play though. Interesting. Well, along those lines, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. Oh, okay. Might this as well bring this sense. up. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't look like this game is coming to Xbox. Uh, during today's massive Nintendo Direct, Capcom announced Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection Arcade Classics, a new retro bundle of popular fighting and brawling games. As mentioned, um, this includes Marvel vs. Capcom True, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, a true fan favorite pixel art fighting game from 2000 that hasn't received the proper console port in over a decade. So a lot of people are extremely excited uh, to play this game uh, and other games in this bundle. However, Xbox players will have to watch from the sidelines. As confirmed by Capcom, the Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection will only be available on PS4, Switch, and PC. This has been noted by Xbox fans online who aren't happy about this decision. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks also because I have this game on Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> we have the arcade version, and that you can't buy anymore. Yeah. Can, can you even play it on Xbox Series? Is it backwards compatible? I feel like probably not. Yeah. If it, it they took they took the game off. Yeah. Before the series was ever a thing. Right. So. Hmm. Um. Yeah. Also, if it's only coming to PS4, that leads me to believe that this is not a high priority release for Capcom. Oh yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so confused by this. That's so weird. So Why it, even bother? If it's coming to just Switch, PC, and PlayStation. Four, that leads me to believe that Capcom doesn't think this is a high priority game at all. Just put it out for the cheapest systems possible, get it out there, just so that they can like retain the license at maximum. Well, to be fair, it's probably just gonna it'll probably be it'll work on PS5. Well, yes, it'll work it'll on just PS5. Be a PS4 version of the game. Right, but like if you're not gonna put the time and effort to do a dedicated PS5 version of yeah. the game, you know, that tells me that like this I mean, is it's not just, a it's I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna blame Sony for this because uh, yeah they just it, it's easy to just put one version instead of having two completely because that's how it works on on PlayStation yeah you got you got to have the PS4 and the PS5 version even if the game is exactly the same yeah you can't they could just say PS4 and PS5 but it's technically not a PS5 game it's a PS4 game that you're playing backwards mm -hmm. compatible that's a little stupid yeah um anyway. Hey, it's good that we're getting Marvel vs. Capcom 2 yeah. on the Switch and whatever. Uh, we'll see how this uh, works out. It comes, it's not out yet. No. Uh, comes out... Did they give it a date? It just says 2024, I think. Yeah, 2024. That's okay. It. Interesting. All right, so it won't just be Switch, but uh, I'd imagine a lot of people would play it on. Yeah. Uh, next up, oh, Bob's favorite Mario Super Mario Party Jamboree. So, is this like a battle royale? I don't know. At the end, there's a lot of people. It's a whole bunch of new boards and tons of mini games, including a board set and a mall and one on a racetrack. Uh, five new board games uh, and two from previous games are available in total. Up to twenty players can compete online. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay. October seventeenth. That's cool. A lot of Twitch streamers are going to have a lot of fun playing with the chat and whatever. Yeah. Uh, I won't. I don't like these games. Yeah. Oh, this looks cool. This looks like, I mean, the best we've had for Mario Party in a while. The, the first Mario Party game that came out on Switch was fucking 
garbage. <laughs> I don't like Mario Party, but that's was a horrible time. Right. So this looks better than that, at least. Okay. Anyway, more big news. The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Finally, you can play as Zelda herself. The woke mob has spoken. Now they're putting <laughs> girls in Zelda games. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Uh, so I, this confused a lot of people because it just it looks like Link's Awakening. Yeah. I so, thought it was like a Link's Awakening 2 or something. That's what I yeah. thought. Uh, but then this also, I think that just looks like uh, Ganon from Link to the Past. Yeah. Uh, and then also Zelda is not in uh, Link's Awakening. Correct. So that also confused me. I was like, is that Zelda or is that the other person? But it is Zelda. Yeah. And it looks like you just fucking straight up play as Zelda. Yeah. Which is awesome. That's cool. Not yeah. many games where you play as Zelda. There's, yeah, no. They're like, the only other games where you play as Zelda are the CDI games. Yeah, and everybody loves the CDI yes, games. Yes, classic games. For a second, I thought this was a remake of one of the CDI games. Yeah. <laughs> but then it has a whole new name, Echoes of Wisdom. Yeah, it's a whole new whole new game. It's a whole new experience. Because Zelda doesn't even like do combat like Link does. Like Al no, Numa's she's got like a gave staff, her a, a staff, yeah. And uh, you can call uh, echoes of items in the world. Yeah. Uh, you can call echoes of other enemies to fight for you, like the Pokemon. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Also of note, this world that she's in is the map of A Link to the Past. Okay. So all the I saw somebody on Twitter like map out all the assets, and it looks just yeah. like uh, the map of A Link to the Past. So that's cool. Uh, it looks great. I liked. Uh, yeah. I didn't play that much of. Uh, I keep forgetting the goddamn name because all Link's the names Awakening. are very close yeah. to each other. Link's Awakening. I didn't play that much of it. I played a couple hours, uh, but I enjoyed what I played. Uh, mm -hmm. This looks really good. Yeah. So. And then along with that, we're getting a gold special edition Nintendo Switch Lite. I rule it. It looks really cool. <laughs> it looks awesome. This is the best Switch Lite we've seen. Yeah. Switch Lite has had some great special editions. Yes. This one, uh, one of the Pokemon ones looked fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, however, this graphic just looks bad. This yeah. looks like a, like a, like a restaurant, like, like <laughs> ad or something. This yeah, look, yeah, just yeah. looks bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's papyrus adjacent. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, the design of the Switch looks really cool. Yes. Uh, you got gold all around it. Uh, you even have gold around the bezels of the screen. Yeah. So that looks really good. It's, I mean, it's, you know, like plastic gold. It's not yeah. like not real, actual gold. Yeah, it's not metallic or anything. It's yeah. just like glittery mm -hmm. gold, uh, glittery plastic. And then the back has the Hyrulean crest. Yeah. Is that what you would yeah. call that? Kind of looks like that special edition uh, 3DS that existed mm -hmm. at one point. Uh, it looks really cool. Uh, people are memeing on this because uh, A, it's not OLED, which like get over yourself. It's fucking yeah. gonna be two hundred dollars. And B, um, it's the end of the Switch's life cycle. So this yeah. is probably gonna be the last Nintendo Switch that, that version that we see. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not like unlike Nintendo to to uh, pull out all of the stops yeah. right before the next thing. Well, comes they're out. clearly pulling out all the stops here because they're releasing like you would think this would be a light. You know, direct, but Nintendo's like, nah, motherfucker, we're going out with a bang. Yeah, every other Nintendo Direct, at the past couple of Nintendo Directs have been garbage. Yeah. And we're like, of course they're garbage. Nintendo doesn't have anything to announce because they're well, waiting for the Switch too. Like in the past, like, even like their successful systems, like when they when it comes to the end of the life cycle, they're just like, fucking whatever, man. Just do one game and then that's it. We got nothing. Yeah. Well, other systems, uh, like I know PlayStation towards the end of their life cycles, they released fucking bangers. Mm -hmm. All all the like really high quality games come out like the last year. Yeah. Um, but the last couple of Nintendo Nintendo Directs, nothing great, and we're always like, oh, they're just waiting for the Switch too. This one, they have a lot of shit, so we were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they were just holding out for no reason. Yeah. It, it seems like. Uh, all right. and, and that wasn't that wasn't the end. No, this was the part of the show, though, where I had to stop because the sprinkler guys came to fix my sprinklers. They're fixed, Dad. <laughs> but that was a good time to yeah, leave because, because it's it, just, dance. just dance 2025. It's the yearly Just Dance <laughs> in right. the Nintendo Direct. It never ends. It never ends. Uh, then more of LEGO Horizon Adventures. Yeah, I mean, I 
we knew this was coming because of the um uh, summer games fest summer games fest yeah and uh i didn't actually see the gameplay though so no it looks kind of cool it looks yeah it looks a lot like a horizon game which it is cool to have on the nintendo switch yes although it's lego yeah uh and then we got stray which i don't like yeah i don't think i think this game was way overhyped and i'm not i don't i wouldn't even recommend it yeah so there you go don't play the cat game don't play even if it looks cute fuck you yeah <laughs> Uh, Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game. Oh, I I know this game. Live uh, as a Hobbit in Tales of the Shire. Uh, it's a basically a life sim set in the Lord of the Rings world, and it looks lovely. Uh, probably gonna be trash. <laughs> uh, look at how ugly oh, the people are in this, this game. This is this is why I know this game because so Polygon wrote it as Tales of the Shire, a Lord of the Rings game. But if you look at the logo, it's uh the video thumbnail. Oh, I, I don't think I can. The logo it's, reads, oh, the logo reads, Tales of the Shire, a The Lord of the Rings game. <laughs> <laughs> they put the whole logo yeah. there. God. Uh, this is what happens when Embracer Group owns you. They don't know what to do. Well, hey, if I'm the graphic designer, I would be, I would be sending an email. Is it a Lord of the Rings game or a The Lord of the Rings game? <laughs> and if nobody answers me, I'm putting the whole logo right there. <laughs> I wanted to take a screenshot of, of one of these guys one and, of the and tweet something like, girls will think this, is, this dude's attractive <laughs> or, so, or something, you know? Yeah. Like, this is the rat boy they, talk, yeah. they tell you about or something. Couldn't think of anything funny. Anyway, here's Ace Attorney Ace Investigations <laughs> Collection. Uh, two Ace Attorney games coming to Switch in a single collection. Uh, there you go. There's a lot more of these games than I thought there were. You know, every time I know there's the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney games and the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney games, but they just keep fucking coming out with Ace Attorney games. Uh, but this is a collection of all the investigations games. Oh, I understand why you're ranting and raving yes. now. <laughs> uh, it's cool they have the old school style and the modern style. Yeah, they got a little pixelated graphics or whatever. So wait, what's the investigations? Collection? I have is no that idea. DS? I'm gonna imagine that's DS. This looks kind of DS. I have no idea. Ham, thank you for the raid. Ham raided us. Oh, and hey, the raid Ham. Messages. Ham says, check your DMs. It's his cock. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely going to check that now. <laughs> thank uh, you for the raid. How was your Nintendo Direct today? Ace Attorney Investigations uh, is Miles, El Miles Edgeworth and Miles Edgeworth 2, The Prosecutor's Gambit. Edgeworth. Edgeworth. Speaking of Ham's cock... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Ace Attorney games are good. If you're yes. interested in like, I don't know, detective work. Could be cool. Detective work? No. Yes, it yeah, is kind of like it's that. detective work yeah. and also like lawyer shit. Lawyer mm. shit. Yeah. I've never played Ace Attorney games. I've played Professor Layton. Yes. That's pretty good. That's, yes. I Have I played? No, I have not played any Phoenix. Well, now is your chance. Wait. Yes. The Hundred Line Last Defense Academy. I don't remember this one even. Uh, me neither. Again, sprinkler guy. <laughs> Coming out early 2025. Yeah. Looks like a weeb game. Yeah. Uh, Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seventh. Listen, if you're into fucking JRPGs, you had a great Nintendo game yeah. today. So there you go. Uh, this is a remake of Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven, uh, October 24th. Of course. Yes. And finally, the one more thing. Metroid Prime 4. Uh, Beyond. Finally they, revealed. Let's fucking go. They put a little tagline on it. Yeah. It was So Cosmic Gear 20X9. Galactic Federation Research. Yeah. So that came up immediately. Everybody You're knows like, what this is. Metroid. I'm like, yeah. well, what kind of Metroid? So that's this the thing, the is that they show this, and I legitimately thought this was Prime remake two and three i didn't think this was prime at first and then she well, ju the jump the jump the sound and then does it do the pan around yes yes it does. yes the ju the the triple flip jump i was like all yeah. right this is no this, this is, is prime. this is prime four yeah but then this i was like oh is this just the uh, uh remake again no i knew this wasn't the remake this is this is uh, none of the prime games look like this 
I mean, the remake looks fucking good. The remake looks... No, but I mean, like, in terms of, like, you're in the middle of a fucking war zone. Yeah. None of them look like this. Yeah, yeah. None of them have anything active in the environment yeah. going on. You're all alone. So, like, this is something new. This is, like... In, this is, like... This is... I knew immediately. This is what we've been waiting for. This yeah. is what we've been waiting seven years. This game was announced in 2017. Seven years ago. Mm -hmm. I didn't have kids then. I wasn't wow. married then. I didn't have a house. Jesus and Christ. now here we are. This this is this looks great. This, this looks phenomenal. This does look really good. Now. Uh, yes. Here's the, here's the question. Because the end the title screen right here clearly states Nintendo Switch and that it's coming uh I believe they actually say it's coming yeah, 2025. They say 2025, yeah. Yes. And the Which we kind of knew. The logo says Nintendo Switch. Yeah. This does it, not look like a Switch game. But this part looks crazy. Yeah. I, I got to be on I'm I'm saying it again. I think the whole thing looked like Prime remake. Right. Until this. This environment right here looks like a cinematic or something. I don't believe that that's something you can actually go to. See, I don't know. I think I'm trying to like parse this here. This is either yes, this is a Switch game, uh, and it'll just be playable on Switch too, be a back compat backwards compatibility, or this will have a dual performance mode. You'll yeah. have a Switch version and a Switch Two version, or they are lying to us and that this is not coming out on the Switch. This will be a Switch Two game. So, I think it has to come out on the Switch. Yeah, they already said it's a Switch game. Mm -hmm. Has to come out on the Switch. I think that it will definitely be backwards compatible with the next console because yeah. they seem to have a lot of interest in making all of their stuff backwards compatible. Uh, there should be a performance mode. It should yeah. run better on the new Switch. Uh, I don't know to what extent they would do that, but mm -hmm. that makes a lot of sense for, the, for, them, for them to do. Uh, hopefully they're learning a lot from all these other uh, uh, handhelds that have been coming out yeah. uh, and how they handle different performance modes and how PCs handle different levels of performance. Yeah. Hopefully that this is able to scale in a similar way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they can't say that it's a Nintendo Switch game in this trailer and then have it come out on a completely different console. Yeah. Also, there's no, there should be like some sort of disclaimer. Usually in a trailer, there's a disclaimer somewhere that says like not actual in-game right. footage or like this, uh, not rendered on a Nintendo Switch or something. Mm -hmm. We, you know, like they would, if that, if what we just saw was a Switch Two thing, it'd be really bizarre for Nintendo not to disclose that this was not captured on a Switch. Right. I mean, we've seen stuff like things get downgraded f after yeah. a while. Not usually from Nintendo though. Yeah. There's a little bit of stuff like that, but usually they're pretty good. They're yeah. pretty good. They don't with like it. to show a game until it's close to final. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Um and like there's like dev units that have more RAM and stuff yeah. and they're capable of more stuff and they don't have to disclose if it's being run on a dev unit. Mm -hmm. Uh but I think being on a completely different system because people are buying a Nintendo Switch to play this game, yeah. you know? Uh that would be incredibly misleading for them to mm -hmm. to do that if it's coming out on a, on a completely different system. Um So yeah. My hope is, I mean, I, I'm, I'd be willing to bet a lot of money this is going to be a regular old Nintendo Switch game yeah. releasing uh, in the early half of next year, probably before March or something, or March or prior to get yeah. in before the end of the fiscal year. And it'll be backwards compatible with the next uh, console. I think a lot of this stuff would be. And I, that's why I think they're comfortable releasing so much stuff at the end of the life cycle, because they must have some sort of way for you to carry your stuff over to yeah. the next to the next game to the next system <sighs> so yeah so, that's the whole direct yeah uh and i think metroid prime 4 is enough to carry the whole direct if that's all yeah. that they had people would be losing their minds uh but there were a lot of great stuff in here yeah a lot of stuff i could care less about well i feel like that's every you know, at any yeah. showcase, be it for, you know, a Nintendo Direct or an Xbox showcase or even the, one of the Sony ones, there's always going to be stuff you don't care about. But I think the amount of stuff where you just go, hey, that looks good. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of that here.
there was a lot more of that here than there was i could care less i would say quick recap for us uh metroid prime 4 mm -hmm. uh the the new zelda nintendo switch and the game echoes yes. of wisdom uh what else marvel's capcom 2 finally being available for people to purchase mm -hmm. Uh, Nintendo 64, Switch Online, Perfect Dark, as well as Metroid Zero Mission and Tarok, if you want to play that, but also uh, Four Swords, Zelda Four Swords. Well, Links to the Past, Four Swords. Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, what else? We know that there's more. That's already a lot. That's, yeah. That's already uh, a lot right off the bat. Um, oh, uh, Mario and Luigi. Uh, brothership uh nintendo world championship nintendo world championship yes yeah. i think that's it yeah that's yeah, mostly those are, it uh, marvel vs. capcom you said that already okay that's a lot that's like six that's yeah. over six games yeah and usually there's like two or three yeah. that i'm like stoked about uh in, in in these directs uh usually i'm happy with two if i can get two games that i'm excited about mm -hmm. uh i'm happy but this had a lot more than that so yeah absolute banger of a direct i would expect silence from them for a long time yeah i think the next time we're going to hear anything big out of nintendo it's going to be an announcement of the switch too yeah which uh they claimed would happen this year was it this year yes they okay. said 2024 okay I, I don't even think they said fiscal did they say fiscal year? i don't i don't remember successor to the nintendo switch they did say I, the chat's saying that they said fiscal okay here's the tweet uh this is for <laughs> president of nintendo we will make an announcement about the successor to the nintendo switch within this fiscal year okay okay so, so it by, could happen early next year too yeah by march 2020 which would suck because that would push it back even further yeah um we're already so far into the switch's life cycle yeah all right, uh, that's it for the Nintendo portion of this show. Yes. So, before well, let me thank people before okay, I go yes. crazy. Uh, we got f uh, two dollars from Kylie over on YouTube saying Marvel, Zelda, and uh, Dragon Quest. I'm one happy girl. Oh my god! And then a cat. Dragon um, Quest. Yeah, Dragon yeah, Quest. Dragon Quest. I mean, look, like, Dragon Quest. It did look cool. You know, if you're into Dragon Quest, Toriyama. And I know who did the dark. Hey, was. yeah, we remember him. Yeah, Bob, it's couldn't care less, not could care less. If you could care less, it means you are a little. He's being pedantic. <laughs> did I say could care less? You must have. I usually say couldn't. I've I've been corrected the wrong way from that before. People really, have, I, I've said couldn't care less. Yeah, and people said um, it's actually could care less, and I'm like, wait, no, you're fucking yeah. wrong. Anyway. Weird Al explains it in uh, word crimes. <laughs> anyway, first of all, shut up. Second of all, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a lot of you that I have to thank. Um, I missed Spankwise, I think, with 34 months. Happy almost three years, Wolf Bros. Thank you so much. Anthony Melee, thanks for the 100 bits. I you know, this reminds me of when my father left me as a young lad. Fuck you. <laughs> Funyuns are tasty. Thank you for the 16 months. It was nice being excited about the direct for a change. Through. Yes. that's how i felt respect the lump thanks for the 23 months there was a direct there sure was yes we talked about it for an hour um otaku sam thanks for the 29 months i'm at a bugs bunny concert but i couldn't wait to hear your thoughts on the direct like are you at a six flags and he's performing a concert or is it are you like in an opera house and he's the conductor or the piano guy like in the old cartoons like you need to clarify what's going on here is there a mouse in the keyboard that's like fucking up his performance. Will went to one of those once and ran up on stage and everybody makes fun of him. Fun fact, yes. He rushed the stage for Bugs Bunny. Uh, Sloth Face, and thanks I do for it the again prime. Too. Uh, Dino, Dolgon, thanks for the prime. Sloth, thanks for the seven months. Yo, it's the pod. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Warheart, thanks for the gifted sub. Kit Free, thanks for the two months. Samps, thanks for the nine months. Neko, thanks for the three months. Ham, thanks for the raid. Jag Racer, thanks for 11 months. Everything to do with Nintendo has been becoming less and less interesting over the past four years. I feel like every other company has much more cool stuff to offer recently. If it wasn't for some of the first party games, who would even care? Lesson one with Nintendo. 
it's only the first party games. That's the reason why the whole company even exists. Yeah. Um, also, I agree that not a lot of stuff with Nintendo over the past couple of years have been exciting for me, which is why I've been playing other consoles, yeah. because there's stuff over there that are more exciting for me. But also because even if stuff releases on multiple platforms, it's just easier for me to play it on PC or my Steam Deck mm -hmm. or something. A lot of the, my favorite games are releasing first on PC or mm -hmm. Steam Deck. But... I don't want to give too much credit to the other console manufacturers. I don't think they're doing much stuff interesting either. No, they're not. I think that it's also been yeah. kind of uh, barren over there, too. I think also, too, you got to remember, the Switch is, I think, officially the second best-selling system of all time. Yeah. It adds outsold both the PS4 and the Xbox One. So that means there is a very high percentage of people where uh, the Switch is their only video game system. Yeah. So the fact that it has all of these games period whether or not they're like you know the big flashy ones that we expect the fact that it has this huge library of games is important yeah that's why like i have a million different ways to play perfect dark yeah i have it on a million different platforms uh but i'm excited that that many people have it right at their fingertips yes. and it's part of a collection that they yeah. might already have mm -hmm. um also, that makes it easy for me to play. I yeah. have it on yet another thing that is a lot more accessible to me than yeah. some of the other stuff that I have. Sonic Slum. Thanks for the two pounds? Euros? I want a Sonic Adventure remake. I would love a Sonic Adventure remake. Yeah, I'm surprised they've never, like, done anything with that. Like, they never tried to, like, do a an HD version or a I mean, full... If they were to do it, they have to change so much. Yeah. The same game's so dated. Uh, and I don't trust them to <laughs> do yeah. things correctly. I would prefer them to just straight up do a Sonic Adventure 3. Yeah. Just do a whole new game. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Now we do this. Backlog! 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 <laughs> Hey guys, speaking of old games, it's the Backlog. It's the show where we talk about our old games. That's right. Every game we've ever bought over the course of almost 40 years, 4-0, four uh, we put into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick one of those games at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. 40 years? Yeah, because I'm three years away from 40. I'm rounding up. Fucking Christ. Uh, 960 is, is 963. That? Three, okay. Yeah. I gotta add Switch games to this. 646 is the number. 646. And that is, ooh, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Wow. Do we just... We've been, we've been, we just did Metal Gear Solid 4. Right. Do we just lump in Ground Zeroes as well? I mean, we might as well, because like... I'm going to say no. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say that's a different game. Okay. Because I'll, I have a lot to say about that on its own. Yes. I, all right. I'll fair enough. I'll allow it. What system did we play this for? PS4, right? Well, you got it on. This is at a time we were both still living at home, and okay. you had your PS4, and then I bought myself an Xbox, so we had it on both. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but I, it's the same game on both. This is recent enough where I streamed a lot of this game. Yes. I loved this game. So it got a lot of criticism because uh, they. I mean, Hideo Kojima is the guy who made all of the Metal Gear games. Yeah. He, was the, he was the showrunner on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and he got fired right before the game came out. Yes. Like just a few months before it launched. He, he had a very difficult development cycle with this and it really strained his relationship with Capcom, who at the time was going through their own like weird identity crisis. They didn't want to make video games anymore, seemingly. And like, they had reached their breaking point with the one guy who definitely still wanted to make video games. Not only wanted to make video games, wanted to make the most expensive video games possible. Did we say Capcom? We meant Konami. Konami yes. Sorry. And forgive us. Yes. They haven't done anything in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my theory as to why he left or got fired, I, oh, I think it's obvious he got kicked he, out. He, he got, got forced out yeah. in some way. 
Uh, my theory is that this game was very expensive and it became more and more over budget and more yeah. and more expensive because it is a grand game. It is a massive game. There's definitely a lot of time and money spent in this game. There's yeah. a lot of big budget uh, uh, talent in it. Yes. Uh, they replaced uh, David Hayter uh, as Snake with uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Yes. Who barely says any words. Yeah. I hate that when they put an A-list actor in here. At the time, he was A-list. <laughs> well, no, he's like, Kiefer Sutherland's still like a big name. People yeah. know who he is. So at the time, I mean, when they put a big talent there, they don't have, they don't want to spend too much money on them. Right. So they book them hourly, and he barely has any lines yeah. in this game, even though he's the main character, which is unfortunate because Snake talks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of what makes Metal Gear so good. Um, but anyway, I think that they just spent so much money on the game and he kept asking for more and more money that they were just like, we can't justify this game as a business anymore. Yeah. Like we've spent, so we, we sell Konami sells bottled water. They have gyms around yeah. Japan. They do other They're things a real other estate than company. video games. Like we can't set, we can't spend hundreds of millions of dollars on your yeah. little fun project. So they ended up firing, which was a terrible move because this game could have been so much bigger than it was yeah even though it was already a huge success when it launched yeah um so the game is clearly in an unfinished state the first i don't know 15 hours or so are amazing and then you get towards a part where you feel like there's just nothing it feels like there's right. just a hard cutoff it's crazy because i would imagine games aren't developed in a linear way like that no you know yeah and it feels like it is though because it, it literally feels like the game just is doesn't have an ending it just yeah. is unfinished you i had to kind of look it up on youtube people <laughs> people data mined the game and found yeah. like a kind of a storyboard of an ending yeah they have, people found like deleted scenes that are technically still on the disc like yeah. the data is in the game but like there's no mission for it there's no context for it it was just abandoned because Yokojima was never able to implement what that story level would have been. Yeah, it sucks because yeah. it was incredible. I, I I loved a lot of this game. It it just it it, it had no resolve. Like it like I yeah. there was no closure in it. And this was supposed to be such a great they set it up to be such a grand thing. Like yeah. like it's it's decades of metal gear and they made it clear like this. even before we knew anything that was happening with kojima and konami like they made it clear this is it this is the yeah. last game this they're not we're not going to do any more metal gears after this this is this is the period at the end of the sentence yeah. so you're expecting it to go out in this big epic fashion and for it to essentially release unfinished like it's just so heartbreaking and disappointing it still has some of my favorite moments in uh video games like in, sing right. in the single player games like there's a couple of games that i would uh give examples of for mo storytelling moments that could only happen in a video game right this has one of them i don't think i want to spoil it for people because right. of how how cool it is uh i'm not even 100 percent sure i'm pretty sure it's a mandatory mission did you beat the game no i okay. quit the game because i don't like this game Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm sorry. Like, I tried. Like, I really, really tried. Like, I I played four. I was a little burnt out by four. I played. Did you like four? We I talked did. about four. I, we did. I did like it, but I'm like, all right, it's the Metal Gear. It's a little long in the tooth, whatever. Um, but then I played, there's a the thing. I played Ground Zeroes. I fucking loved Ground, Ground Zeroes. Ground Zeroes is awesome. I was like, oh my God, I'm so pumped for five. I'm yeah. so pumped for the Phantom Pain. And then the Phantom Pain comes out. It's not even the fact that the game is unfinished. That is the problem. I don't like the way, like the mission structure of this. This isn't Metal Gear to me. This is a different game. The fact that you're so focused on like resource management and maintaining the mother base and like, yeah. you know, making sure your teammates are happy. And like the fact, like the the fact that you have to go into every mission like with a very specific loadout otherwise you're gonna have a very difficult time you know depending on what mission you select and like what you want to do like if you pick the wrong sidekick if you pick quiet instead of the dog you're gonna have a bad time and if you pick the dog instead of quiet you're gonna have a bad time on a different mission so i i'm not i don't love rpg elements like that where yeah. you have to like tool around 
sometimes I do like to tweak loadouts and stuff. Right. Uh, this game, I was willing to put up with it because of how much I liked the gameplay loop. Uh, but that being said, for the most part, I played this game as a pacifist. Right. So every loadout of mine was just the uh, tranquilizer sniper and the tranquilizer yeah. uh, handgun, and that's it. And I was leading, I was building my loadout and unlocking stuff to get all of the uh, uh, less lethal weapons right. and stuff. And building out uh, uh, quiet to have a less lethal sniper weapon. Yeah. So you also get a companion in this game. You can switch between uh, different side characters yeah one of them is the dog yes who's great yeah the other one is quiet who's yeah. a sniper who's also great mm -hmm. uh one of them is i think the person who's playing this uh uh gameplay right now that you're seeing on screen their companion is this big robot that you uh drive yeah. around in uh there's other ones too but i mostly just use the dog and quiet yeah um and I also didn't like the resource management of Mother Base too much, but I, I ended, I, I got used to it and kind of uh, enjoyed taking a break between missions and tweaking around with it. Yeah. What I liked the most that a lot of other people didn't like was uh, the sort of open, uh, I don't know, like the sandbox structure. Yeah, of it. that I thought was cool. Yeah. Like I thought that was like a unique uh, expansion of what the Metal Gear idea was, because the Metal Gear games they weren't they were never open world, but like the place the places you were were open enough where you could you know choose your own path and like decide how you're going to finish this level yeah i just think that like you know every the thing is too like every metal gear game gets more and more complex with the moment to moment gameplay and this just like hit a point of like high complexity for me that i just think was at odds with like what a metal gear game should be so do you think the actual mechanics for doing action in the game was too complex or do you think that the other stuff around it like the unlocking stuff and and the going back to mother base and like bringing resources back to mother base more so that stuff okay. than every, that yeah. stuff is a little annoying yeah. that stuff is more annoying to me in peace walker there's a yeah. lot of stuff like that in peace walker yeah. and and uh if you like don't play the game for a while and you come back to it it's it gets a little confusing yeah um now i did really like the mechanics in this game right uh, uh the, just running around and shooting and like and the stealthing around is awesome and that's part of why ground zeros was so good too because yeah. that's such a confined way yeah. of, of it uh somebody in the chat uh and rock says these mechanics is hell divers too so i like hell divers too also yeah and i couldn't explain to somebody why i like hell divers too i was just like i just like i just think it's a fun game to just run yeah. around and shoot things and then i saw on TikTok. A side by side comparison of the movement and shooting mechanics in Helldivers 2 versus this. Right. And it is one to one. <laughs> They're exactly the same. Okay. And that's why Helldivers 2 is good. Yeah. It's because they ripped it from this game. So, uh, again, there are moments in this game that I think are uh, some of the best cinematic moments in video games that could only be told in video games and yeah. are only impactful because of video games. I think there's a lot here that does a lot for the Metal Gear story, that does a lot for the Metal Gear franchise i think it has a really good twist at the end too that i think is really good yeah it's just in the fucking third act it just crumbles and just gives you nothing it just leaves you yeah it, it could have it, it builds you up to just then give you kind of nothing yeah i uh, think i didn't realize that the game was over like when it was over yeah uh so that part is unfortunate but i do think that this is still one of the best games I've ever played just because of how well it does everything else. I think it's overrated. I think <laughs> when it came, no, I do because I, when it came out, this is one of those games where like it comes out and every fucking review site under the sun, you know, just gives it a 10 out of 10, no questions asked. Like they don't even like get into any of the problems of it. They just say like, Oh, it's a Kojima metal gear game. It has to have a 10. It's the only score we're allowed to give it. Like they don't go. This is, this is why, you know, people have such a problem with review scores is because they put the tens on pedestals where only like five games are allowed to get tens these days. Grand Theft Auto, Metal Kojima Metal Gear Solid, uh, Mario, Zelda, and uh, fucking Tetris or whatever. And like, that's it. Nothing else is allowed to cross that. And like, when those games get tens, they don't go into detail as to like why, just that they're great. They don't break down like any of the actual problems with the gameplay or the story or like the mechanics of it. They just gloss over it because these games are expected to get 
tens because they are in the category they are the franchises that we have deemed worthy of receiving tens so this does not deserve a 10 no because it is unfinished yeah they, they literally just doesn't yes. have an there's there's clearly missions it's that unfinished, are missing. and i feel like it is you know it is well within people's rights to criticize uh mechanics that are yeah. flawed in a lot of sense but, because like yes the mother base shit does drag everything down considerably well i'm willing to give it a pass for that because of how well it does everything else and i think that as, especially at the time no other game was doing the everything else as good as this. right this had so much more going for it in terms of actual game mechanics and actual gameplay that like having to fucking go through menus and mother base was like fine you know uh so i understand it in that way but it's agree just to give this a 10 out of 10 just because konami fucked the game up right. so bad konami stood in the way and cock blocked this game from being as good as it could mm -hmm. have been yeah um Last thing I'll say, it did have a multiplayer element. You could yes. just go into other people's bases and fuck everything yes. up. Yes. Uh, and I think you can opt out of it. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah, I, I can see you I not want to do opt that. out of it. Then it also had like a dedicated multiplayer mode where like you could like work with teammates to like disarm yeah. nukes and stuff. So the big deal with the multiplayer mode was that uh, in the game, the game gives you a choice whether or not you want to make a nuke on Mother Base, on yeah. your, uh, whether or not you want your army to have a nuke or not. Uh, and there was sort of a goal within the game to have everybody decide not to have a nuke yeah and if you had a nuke i think other players their objective was to take it away from you or something yeah um and the game hit a point on playstation 3 where yeah. there were they were the game was completely nuke free not a single person uh had a nuke on their mother base yeah so they th that was like one of the goals of the game was to make sure uh no army had a nuke which is pretty cool uh and like Metal Gear, there's sort of like an incentive to uh, not kill people if you want to go that route. Like yeah. they make it pretty uh, easy for you to, well, not easy, but they, you can play the game without killing anybody. Mm -hmm. I killed two people the whole playthrough. Really? Uh, because I accidentally ran a guy over <laughs> twice, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love this game. It's really unfortunate that we never got to see like a proper ending with it. It's unfortunate that could Kojima got launched. Uh, Will thinks it's overrated. I do. I don't think it's overrated per se. If they're giving it tens, I don't think it deserves a ten. Yeah. So in that way, I, I guess it's overrated. I should also point out that, like, according to how long to beat the main the the main story of this game is forty five hours long. It is a long. It's a long game. It's, it's a, a long game for you to get cucked at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. The other Metal Gear games like average about like you know fifteen hours and stuff. That seems more manageable to me. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to go back to this game because of its length. You know, I it just I don't so have that type good. of time anymore. So, Wood was interested in Metal Gear, mm -hmm. and everybody always asks us, of, us if they're interested in Metal Gear, where should they start? Yeah. Uh, I think the best place to start if you're willing to go back that far is Twin Snakes. Yeah. Uh. But for Wood, he doesn't really like retro games. Right. So I said, just play Ground Zeroes. It's an hour long, two yeah. hours long. Uh, and it's got the same mechanics as this. Yeah. So you can see how good it gets, yeah. you know, in a quick little two hour demo. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that. I think that that's the easiest yeah. entry point for somebody. It's not the best way to experience the Metal Gear story, but it's, it's a such a low barrier to entry. Yeah. Only two hours. I would recommend that over this game because this game is so long and a little disappointing towards the end. Yeah. So play Ground Zero is mm -hmm. what I'd say. And if you like yeah. that, then you get another 45 hours of it with this game. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. A lot of Metal Gear. Yeah. You get to Metal, Gear, Metal Gear as a whole is good. You, never, you can never go wrong with Metal Gear. Yes, you can. You, so, you could. Survive. You could. Yeah. <laughs> True. Snake's Revenge. Uh... Thanks for watching the backlog. Yes. Come to a podcast sometime. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. As for the podcast listeners, uh, what are we talking about now? Oh, Valve we got, got sued. We got Mackenzie with 24 months. I recently grabbed the PlayStation Portal 
And I'm actually having a really good experience so far. Did you ever revisit it? I think it'll actually help me play more PlayStation games because I just prefer playing games in handheld. A lot of people are telling me that it's gotten better. Will, you played it recently. You told I me not, it still I, sucks. I have not played it recently. Who played it recently and told me it sucks? I don't know. Anybody, Greg. My friend Greg, Greg, okay. He, uh, they, they, they just released a firmware update for it uh, where you can now like use it on public Wi-Fi. And like a lot of other oh, really? stuff. That was like stuff. his biggest complaint because yeah. he was in a hotel room and he couldn't get to My it. thing with it now, like I would love to try it again because everybody, like all I hear is good things about it now, which is completely counter like what our experience was. But my problem is I would have to go downstairs, turn on my PlayStation 5, sit there and wait for it to connect and then go back upstairs to play the, <laughs> play the portal. And by the time I'm done with that, I don't want to play the games anymore. There's just nothing on PlayStation that makes me want to play it. There are several games I have on PlayStation, like not new shit, but like older stuff yeah. that I would want, that I actively do want to play, but I don't have the time to like, you know, sit down and play games on the TV anymore. And like the whole act of like turning on the uh, PS5, turning on the portal, waiting yeah. for all that, like that's extra steps that I don't want to encounter. Yeah. I do get uh, people don't like how I uh, had a la I had a laggy experience mm -hmm. for, for the most part. Like it didn't perform as well as I think it should have. Yeah. But for the most part, my issues with the PlayStation Portal is just fundamentally how it's supposed to be used. Like yeah. I think that there's just a litany of other ways for me to play a game that I would much rather do than, right. than fucking that. And one of them includes just using my phone for remote play with a backbone control. Right. That at least brings up a browser for you if you need to log into a Wi-Fi. Yeah. Or, uh, uh, apparently there's a firmware update that'll let you do that. But still, I have a lot more options. Like let's say if the internet sucks, I can just play a different game on my phone, yeah. you know? <sighs> Fellas, please with six months. Love you, sweet, sweet wolf bros. Thank you. Thank you. Uh. Daniel Dooling with our first uh, $5 super chat over on YouTube. Uh, yeah. First they, of the day. Well, it says, let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? Farmer Gooch maybe usually gives us four ninety nine. Yes. Okay. So that one penny kept us out from getting Congrats. His, you are yeah. now the top donor on yeah. YouTube. Uh, Daniel says two things. I hope this show never dies. Thank uh, you. And if I ever meet Bob in person, I won't say hi. I'll say, you hungry? 50 super loud. Thanks, Wolf Bros. I don't know what I would think if you said that. <laughs> Imagine like you're just walking around my own business. All of a sudden you hear someone's like down the block. You hungry? <laughs> <laughs> uh all right let's oh valve's getting sued yes uh valve is being sued in the uk for 656 pounds or 843 real american dollars what a great picture they used yeah uh over claims that it uses steam's dominance in the pc gaming marketplace to shut out competition and overcharge for games the lawsuit filed on behalf of children's digital rights uh campaigner vicky shotbolt uh, by law firm Milberg London accuses Valve of overcharging 14 million PC gamers and abusing its dominance position in the UK. Uh, companies who hold dominant position in the market are not allowed to charge excessive or anti-competitive prices, Milberg said at uh, steamojumoney.co.uk, a website dedicated to the lawsuit. They also cannot impose the, uh, other unfair trading conditions that prevent or hinder others from competing with them. Uh, we believe Valve Corporation has been unfairly shutting out competition uh, for PC games and uh, in-game content, uh, which has meant that UK customers have paid too much for these products. The suit also alleges that Valve's preeminence has enabled Valve to uh, continue charging an excessive commission of up to 30% to game publishers, which in turn results in inflated prices for uh, customers. The lawsuit turns on three key points. That Valve imposes price parity obligation clauses on developers, preventing them from offering lower prices on other platforms. Uh, that all on, uh, that all add-on content for games purchased on Steam must also be purchased through Steam, a practice known as tying, and that the uh, and that the cut it takes on all sales through Steam, the aforementioned excessive commission, has resulted in excessive pricing on games. 
Valve has faced multiple Steam-related legal actions in the past in 2018. Uh, it was slapped with a $2.4 million fine in Australia for Steam's lack of refund policy prior to 2015. And in 2023, it ate a $1.73 million fine uh, for geo-blocking games that is preventing game key purchases in some geographic regions uh, from being activated in other locations. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of money, but it's a drop in the bucket. Uh, 2023 VG Insight reports that Steam uh, estimates uh, it's estimated that Steam earns more than nine billion dollars in revenue in 2023. So I saw some discourse about this on Twitter. Somebody said uh, so one of the things they're being in trouble for is that they are was it that they're paying people to not release on other platforms. No, not that they're paying people to not release on other platforms. They're saying that the, um, like the terms in place are like, you know, making it hard for people to release games on other. Yeah. So somebody tweeted like, um, yeah, Steam doesn't do that, and it's like, okay, clearly they do. If they're being, <laughs> if there's a charge up against yeah. them in court, you know, clearly think- they know something that you don't. If yeah. that's the case, this is. Something that a lot of console companies do. They all do this shit. Right. They're all competing to make sure that games release on their platform and not on other platforms or make it harder for people to purchase games on other platforms. Yeah. So it's just this weird sort of checks and balances where one company can't hold all of the power. And it just so happens that on PC, uh, this one company does hold most of the yeah, power. Yeah, like valve is the largest video game store in the world like even on pc i know epic has like caught up but it's still a drop in the bucket compared to what like valve has done over the past like 20 years yeah so they're they're probably they probably are at a point where like they do have like unfair you know terms and conditions that like do impact developers especially the smaller developers yeah so i'm not uh too surprised i Mm -hmm. mean it's just one of the things that happens when a company gets a little too successful. Yeah. Uh, things like that will come in to try to put it in check a little bit. I wouldn't be uh, too concerned about it. Yeah. But, I mean, Microsoft keeps trying to uh, do something that'll <laughs> that'll put them in a position like Steam. Yeah. So uh, there's potential where they uh, kind of uh, take over. Or not take over, but at least take a little bit of the market share away from, from Steam. Yeah. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, next news, we got Star Wars Outlaws will be short. Yes. Well, short is a relative term, but uh, creative director says it'll be finished. It can be finished in 30 hours. That is not short. <laughs> uh, in an interview with uh, Video Game Chronicles, uh, following the game's big reveal at Monday's Ubisoft Forward Showcase, uh, creative director Julian uh, Giretti Discuss how the length of the game will be uh, take how long the game will take to complete, as well as the decision to cut a significant feature from the original vision of the game. Very, very early on, we decided that it was going to be a 25, 30 hour golden path adventure, 50, 60 hours for completionists. And that is for a guy with a family and a job. Uh, it's still a fair amount of time, but it's not Assassin's Creed epic 200 hours worth of gameplay. So that allows us to really focus on the detail. Uh, it allows us to focus maybe with a smaller team on executing something that is manageable. Video Game Chronicles also asked uh, Giretti, uh if Massive has uh, Massive was able to put everything into the game that it wanted originally or some aspects of the vision had to be compromised in any way. As a creator, I'm a big believer in setting an initial vision that's exciting, ambitious, and achievable, he said. It's super important to make sure that everybody who's working on the game is working in the same direction towards the same goal. On The Division, Division 2, and Star Wars Outlaws, that vision has always uh, been more or less respected, 95% respected. Uh, Some things are added, few things have changed or removed, but very, very little. For example, uh, removed, we wanted a swimming like the... We wanted swimming, like the first few iterations of the pitch that we did. Uh, we'd have loved to have had swimming. It is not possible. Animation said it is not possible in terms of the scope. So, okay, we can live without that. We'll do without it. There's plenty of other things that we can explore. But all That's the- interesting considering they're copying this game from a different Ubisoft game. Yeah. <laughs> that presumably has swimming in it. Yeah. But all the mini games that we have, I don't know if you played Sabak or the arcade games. None of those were planned originally, so those were added during the development. So it's a little give and a little take. 
All right, so I mean, like, no, it's not short, but like 30 hours is a decent size for a game, and I don't, I think that's a good for an open world game that doesn't overstay its welcome. I mean, I'd love for a good 10 to 20 hour game. Yeah, like I want that 10 to 20 hours to just be good. I don't mm. care how long the game is after. No, that. I agree. Uh, I don't need a grand epic uh 200 hour game. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um. That being said, uh, I don't imagine this game is going to be all 30 hours of greatness. <laughs> no. I would love for it to be. I hope that it is. Yeah. Um, I don't have much faith in that, though. I think people just got their hands on it. People, There was like an embargo that was lifted. People played it. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, actually, I know somebody who played it like a while ago, like months ago. Really? Oh, it was Game Informer did a, a, oh, right, a cover right, story yeah. on it. Um, it, but it's hard to tell. Like, you know, they're given like a vertical slice of the game that is yeah. supposed to be the best part mm -hmm. of the game. So, like, how could you tell, like, how good the game is? Um, so, anyway, I hope it's good. Also, this game, uh, there's like a million versions of it, and they're all a lot of money. So, yeah. Uh, so, just, you know, it's a Ubisoft game. So, maybe wait until the holidays where you can get it on sale for like half price. Wait for a review, at least. Yeah. That that trip that's true. Wait for that first, and then and then yeah, the and then you can buy it on digital download. Yeah, like when it comes. Uh, all right. Next, uh, PS Five is finally integrating Discord into the console's UI. That's really interesting because yeah. PlayStation owns a share of Discord. Yes, uh, and, and you could do it on Xbox. Yeah, you can fucking have a Discord call on Xbox, yeah. and you can stream your gameplay through Discord on Xbox. Yeah. And PlayStation does not have that. And you know why? Because PlayStation, their console sucks. <laughs> PlayStation announced on Thursday that the PS5 will be getting Discord integration according to the PlayStation blog. The new feature will roll out to users in the coming weeks. At long last, you'll be able to play Fortnite and other multi-platform games on your, uh, dear, uh, with your dear PS5 friends without fudging around within different in-game chats. Uh, Sony PlayStation, which owns a minority stake in Discord, promised the integration uh, as far back as 2021, uh, it's not that there was no way to use Discord. Yeah. It's not that there's no way to use Discord as a PS5 user, but prior use required an external app and other workarounds to use it. Now PlayStation users uh, will be able to just log on to chats directly from the console without relying on the Discord, PC, or mobile apps, uh, the blog said. The feature will launch over the next few weeks, starting in Japan and Asia, followed by Europe, Australia, New Zealand, the Middle East, and finally the Americas. Okay, so I remember now. I used a Discord on the PS5. And the way that I had to do it mm -hmm. was I had to message myself in the in the the PlayStation like friend chat. Okay. Discord.gg slash wolfden or something. Uh -huh. So that the fucking uh, uh, server would show up in the browser because there's no browser, but you can access right. the browser if you type the URL to yourself. And that's how I was able right. to talk to people through Discord, even though PlayStation owns a share yeah. of Discord. <laughs> but now apparently it's just an app and you can just use it. Yeah. So that's good. PlayStation has a very strange uh, oh, like operating system. Like the, yeah, the, yeah. Their UI is not great. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, this is 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 a is an effect of that. So yeah, glad they were able to figure it out at least. Anyway, uh, Anthet, thank you for the three months. Uh, fake Wolfden fans, says, did you hear about Steam being banned in Vietnam? No, 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 oh, no. Steam became banned in the country of Vietnam. Uh, why? <laughs> Can't release games in the country without government approval. However, Vietnam Vietnamese game makers cannot sidestep the compliance process. The represent the representative also said Valve's actions are an injustice to domestic publishers. They added that authorities must take action or local game publishers quote will die. <laughs> well, so it sounds like they just want to support local game publishers. Yeah. All internet providers. Dis decisively decisively block access to the steam launcher and web 
All right, so there you go. Sorry, Vietnam. Use expressvpn.com. Oh, no. Sorry, oh, no. Com. Use code <laughs> DEN. I had a stroke, and I thought the year was 2022. Uh, next news. Resident Evil coming to PC, the original one. Uh, Capcom looks set to re-release the original 1996 version of Resident Evil on modern platforms. That is according to uh, a writing by Euro's Peggy, uh, which indicates that the original game has been cleared for release uh, for, on PC this week. Although it was released on PC in 1996, the original Resident Evil is not widely available for purchase on modern storefronts. On Steam, currently none of the original Resident Evil games are available to buy. On PlayStation, the remix director's cut of the game is available via the PlayStation Plus Classics Library. Capcom has released... <coughs> I'm dying. Uh, Capcom has released three commercially successful Resident Evil remakes in the past five years. In December, Resident Evil 4 remake director of uh, Yasuhiro Anpo confirmed that it intends to release more. It threatened to release more. Uh, we released three remakes so far and they've all been received very well, he said. Since it allows modern audiences to play these games, it is something I am happy to do as someone that loves the old older games and want uh, to continue doing more. Uh, what game we will remake in the future is something that we would like to announce in the future, so please look forward to it. Uh, so is it this the the original game, not a the, remake? The original PlayStation version, version of the game. Yes. Uh, okay, okay. So the I believe the 2001, no, the 2002 remake of this game is available on Steam. The GameCube version. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. But not the original, original version. We here appreciate uh, being able to access the old versions. Of yes. Uh, to be clear, play the GameCube remake over this. It's oh, a much yeah. better version. Oh, definitely. But the fact that it is available to people is important. You want uh, the original versions of these games available because they are different from the remakes. Yes. Uh, next news. We have a second Uncharted movie announced. Hooray! Everybody's so excited about the second Uncharted movie. Uh, Sony Pictures is working on a follow-up to its 2022 Uncharted movie. The news uh, was shared during the studio's uh, Cine Europe presentation this week, as reported by Variety, in which it was reportedly confirmed that Tom Holland would again play Nathan Drake. The Uncharted movie, which had a $120 million budget, launched in February 2022 and earned more than $400 million worldwide. To date, only a handful of video game movies adaptations have earned more uh the post credit scene at the end of uncharted T's potential sequel and director ruben fleischer told entertainment weekly um uh, that it was designed to let audiences know that this is hopefully wouldn't be the last time they were hearing from drake and sully uh while naughty dog has claimed it's moved on from the series in april 2022 a recruiter for the studio seemingly hinted that sony could be planning future uncharted releases announcing that she joined naughty dog uh Christina Marie Drake McBready said that uh, it was special to being a future teams, special to building future teams uh, for not only new titles, but also for the legacy of Uncharted. Uh, so they want to do, so we're going to get another Uncharted movie. I mean, Great. people didn't like the first one, no, but it probably did fine. So uh, I guess, it, yeah, fine enough to do a sequel. Yeah, it's just, they're, they're just trying to make money. I, mean, I understand that, but like, can they make money doing good things? <laughs> like, that's what I don't understand. Hey, maybe this is an opportunity for them to make a good one. Maybe. Uh, EPS5000 in the YouTube chat says, having a Discord app directly on a console is dumb. Now everyone on Discord will know what game you're playing, even if you're not streaming it. I'd rather just keep them separate. Well, turn it off. Here's how you <laughs> turn it off. Uh, and uh, You go to your Discord settings, and you go to the activity privacy tab and you uncheck share your detected activities with others i have it off because i don't want people to know when i'm playing a game without them anyway um next news we have sea of thieves most downloaded game of the p on ps5 last month what yeah see if there's so many great games see if these was the most downloaded game on ps5 across europe 
and North America in May. That's according to Sony's own metrics on a new blog post, which revealed that Rare's 2018 swashbuckler topped the PS5 charge after Xbox finally brought the game to its competitor system at the end of April. Other Xbox game studio games like Grounded, Fallout 4, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which is also now owned by Xbox, of course, also took the top spot in PS5's uh, top 20 downloaded games rundown, and Minecraft still dominates PS4 downloads across all three territories, too. Uh, F124 is off to the races in May's uh, PS5 list uh, by entering the top three of the most downloaded in the EU regions, with Sea of Thieves ascending the list in both the US and EU regions, according to the blog post. The PSVR 2 list saw new releases. Um, Madison VR uh, enter the fray of the most downloads in May. See if these, the Sea of Thieves team recently revealed that 40 million of us had embarked, had embraced their inner pirate and set sail um, in the, since the game's debut across Xbox and PC. It's just cool that this game came out on PS5 at all. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Happy people are having fun with it. <laughs> I played it when it first came out. Wasn't really into it. I saw people playing this recently. Still can't imagine wanting to play this game. I mean, like, what did, what did we say the game came out in? Like, 2018? Uh, yeah, sounds about right. So, like, it, it was always going to be, like, a live game. Mm-hmm. And, like, those games are not the same in year one as they are in, like, year 10 or whatever. Like, they keep evolving. So I think Sea of Thieves evolved to a state where, like, people, like, enjoy it and, like, actively love, like, going in and playing. Like, it was popular on Xbox and PC. Now that it's on, you know, a system people actually own, it (laughs) only has a chance of, like, being more popular, you know? Yeah, and this is uh, Microsoft's property. So hopefully uh, they release more stuff multi-platform. Well, I think they're they sure as shit are going to now. Yeah. You know... If anything, this just proves that like they have to do that in order to keep the business alive. Yeah. Last news, uh, this is Miyamoto. This is Miyamoto. We will be a broad we will be broadcasting a Nintendo Direct tonight. Uh, but before that, I would like to make an announcement. The release date for the new Super Mario animated movie in Japan has been set for April 24th, 2026. We are working with the Illumination team to make it a fun movie, so please continue to look forward to it. All right. We have a date. Again, he doesn't say the sequel to the Super Mario Brothers movie. He just says the new Super Mario animated movie. Yeah, so uh, there's no official title. No. But it'll be, I'd be willing to bet it'll be called Super Mario Brothers 2. Something. Right. Maybe not 2. It might be Super Mario Brothers. And then a a thing. A prefix, like, right. like, a, like a word. Yeah. Um. So I have to find way to uh, right to no, address I, it as, as for right now. I know people like there's rumor out there that like the next movie might actually be a Donkey Kong. Oh, but that would not be a Super Mario animated movie. But it's part of the Super Mario Cinematic Universe. No, that would he wouldn't misdirect you like that. You don't think me? He would say would. Super Mario Cinematic Universe movie. See, I don't know because he might have been asked to you know chooses words carefully from illumination well that's not careful enough he's gotta be if it's gonna <laughs> right. be donkey kong gotta be more careful i will say he didn't say brothers yes luigi might not be in it oh no oh no not luigi not my boy not my boy all right so that's everything yes Twitter the week Twitter the week Twitter the week hit you with that <laughs> Uh, this one's from Emily E. Draws. Echoes uh, of wisdom, Zelda, I love you already. This is a tweet from Zelda who says, out here living my best life. And it's Zelda in the background is Link drowning. Yes. And there's a reply tweet that says, Link is drowning. And then Zelda says, this ain't about him. And she's right. <laughs> yeah. I do like it's like Link is drowning, but he's also doing the Terminator thumbs up. He's doing the Terminator thumbs yeah. up. This yeah. is fine. It's all good, baby. Let yeah. her shine. Yeah. All right, now we're in the chat talking to you people. Yes. Oh, no, we're not in the chat. I'm so what? sorry. I'm so sorry. We're in the comments of last week. Yes. Starting with people who left comments on last week's World Dead Podcast or on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash World Podcast. What's the problem? I said chat, oh. and I am deeply oh. apologetic Oh, that's right, because you it. always say, now we talk to you people. Yes. Yes. Um, 
All right. So last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube comments, we got Tanginaw Gaming, who says that Dutch angle on Will's camera really helped create some nice drama slash anxiety for the first part of the show. Ha. Huh. I think people just like saying that they know what a Dutch angle is. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with his shot. So when I, when I first started studying. Ooh, film, ah, there's like a little <laughs> angle on it. When I first uh, started studying film in college, uh, it was referred to as a canted angle. That makes, I mean, that makes sense. I didn't know what a Dutch angle was until I graduated college. Because that's what everybody referred to it as, except my little bubble of, like, stupid art film school. But it doesn't even look crooked. No, now it's not. I mean, last week it probably was. No, it probably looked exact. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it. <laughs> so Actually, I no, I think I did touch it in the very beginning yeah. of the episode. Yeah. So. But no, people on other episodes have said that that's a Dutch angle. Right. I think people just like saying that. Oh, yeah. Canted makes sense, though. It's canted. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think because the Dutch innovated that style, so that's why it's called a Dutch angle. The Dutch didn't have tripods, so. Yes. <laughs> Underscore Eric says, fellas, what are your top five Long Island bands? I know you have some deep cuts you could pull from. Now, five? Before we move on. Does Billy Joel count as a band? Uh, yes. Okay, so that's that's number one with a bullet. <laughs> so, um, I know a lot of Long Island bands. Right. I played with a lot of Long Island bands. Mm -hmm. Hardly any of them are any good. Yeah. So, it's five, I got a name? Five. Uh, the Sleeping. The Sleeping. Uh, Public Enemy. There you go. They're a Long Island band. Really? Yeah. Chuck D and Flavor Flav went to Adelphi. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't know that. Um, uh, does Coheed and Cambria count? They're from New York and they filmed uh, the, the what's their fame? What's their Good Eye Sniper? Yeah. They filmed the video for that in Amityville. Okay. So does that count? We'll put a little asterisk on okay. it. Uh, I don't want to say Taking Back Sunday. No. They're from Long Island. They are from but Long there's Island. There's got to be better than Taking no, Back Sunday. No, they're definitely better than Taking Back Sunday. What do we got? Three? Three so far. Uh, I'm not going to include Twisted Sister because everybody on Long Island has met D. Snyder except me, so he doesn't count. <laughs> Fuck you, D. Snyder. <laughs> Why have I not run into you in a Dunkin' Donuts yet? Somebody says brand new. Also, no. Yeah. <laughs> not a fan. For reasons. Uh, Glassjaw? Glassjaw. 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 Glassjaw is not bad. Uh, who else we got here? We need one more. We need one did, more did we, did solid we save, one. Did we say the sleeping? We did say the sleeping. I'm thinking of like a band I know, and I can't. The movie life? Yeah. Do they count? Head on one guy's from here. Head on does not count because right. that's just the guy from Glass Jaw. Right. <laughs> the movie life is a Long Island uh, punk rock band comprised of, yeah. Really? Long Island, I guess, yeah. Oh, just one guy. Anyway. Sometimes, uh, sometimes all it takes is one. All right. The movie life. Weren't okay. they on the burnout soundtrack? I think so. Yes. <laughs> there, there you, you go. go. There's your five. Um, Honorable mention, Blue Easter Cult. Don't fear the Reaper. They're from Long Island? They are from, they're from Stony Brook. I'm learning yeah. so much. Um, Indie Gex says, here is the explanation for the Dragon Ball game. The Budokai Tenkaichi series is, was always called Sparking in Japan. They're just making the sparking title worldwide now. The Budokai games are 2D fighters. Fighter Z is a more hardcore fighting game that's not in the same series as Budokai. What the? Okay. I, so which one's the 3D fighting game? Budokai Tenkaichi. Well, he says they are 2D fighters. No, Budokai is regular. Oh, I well, see what happened here. Well, no. Indigax, you didn't tell me that Tenkaichi is different from Budokai. He does, though. He. In the first sentence, he says Budokai Tenkaichi was always called Sparking in Japan. Yes. yes. And so. then he says the Budokai games are 2D fighters. That's not differentiating the two. I think what happened here is when... They... And I don't know anything, and he's trying to explain it. He Correct. did a bad job. I think what happened here is when <laughs> they brought the Sparking games to America, they had to translate it for some stupid reason. They couldn't just call it Dragon Ball Sparking. Yeah. So they said, well, the Budokai games are popular. Why don't we call it Budokai and then another Japanese word? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what led to the confusion. Right. Right. So Okay, so we got Budokai Tenkaichi, we got a Budokai, and then we got Fighter Z. Yes. So this new one, Sparking Zero is a 3d fighter yes it is they are 
they are yakuza like a dragoning it they are reverting back to the japanese name going forward right okay i understand Thank you for clarifying. There's no confusion, bros. Budokai is 2D and 10K H is 3D fire. There is confusion! <laughs> I was confused! PTG N87 says, Bob's acting like the, like most of the ROMs aren't super expensive to try and get the physical ones, plus spend more money to try and dump them when you could just go download them. I still go buy if I can't buy it. It's spelled buy wrong it from the company where the money goes to them or the developers then go ahead and torrent it i didn't act like that at all i'm just saying if you have the ability to rip it yourself you should rip it yourself before you download it if yeah. you if you you should try to rip it yourself as much as you can before you go and do an illegal is all i'm saying not that it's easier yeah but it is depending on the game Remarkably easy to, yeah. to rip around. Yeah. Bieberlote says, I used to have the Game Boy Color Tony Hawk. Five exclamation points. <laughs> oh my God, the memories. Three exclamation points. The horror. Three exclamation points. <laughs> There's definitely like a subset of like fans who had like the Game Boy version of like popular console games. And like specifically like have weird fond memories of a game they know is trash <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i mean there's games i remember playing a lot of because i wanted to like it so bad yeah or because i didn't know any better yeah and then the more you play it and the older you get the more you realize they were not good mm -hmm. and that is one of those games yes all right we're in the chat okay uh Mecha Dragon says another announcement of guests from Long Island Retro Gaming. Another year of Wolf Den Bros aren't on. Bob, what did you say to them? And then I think uh, fake Nintendo, uh, fake Wolf Den fan, I think said the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the deal is. I think <laughs> that they just know we're going to go anyway, so they don't bother asking right. us. Uh, the only difference is that we have to buy our own tickets, yeah. <laughs> at, which is $25, yeah. $50 straight to them. Yeah. So, so they get $50 if they don't invite us. Yeah. Think about that. Uh, also, we don't do a panel. Yeah. And so. I don't really care. I'd rather not do a panel. I, I mean, like, if you want us to do a panel, we'll just set up two tables or I two mean, chairs we'll outside a, the... I mean, if you ask, we'll do yeah. a panel. But, and, you know, that'd be a uh, a great way for people to come and and, and see us. Yes. Otherwise, people say, are you going to Long Island Retro? And then we have to say, we'll be there on the Saturday, probably. We're just going to be walking around and we're... Yeah gonna probably only be there for like two hours because the convention's pretty small yeah um if we had a panel we would have a meeting point, yeah basically um that's the only difference yeah we're gonna be there but you'll just have to find us find us and you're you gotta kind of uh, uh you know play the lottery to yeah. see if we're gonna be here there. here's a hint look for the hat yeah <laughs> i will be wearing the hat we are relatively tall yes we do stand out yes so uh we're usually there like in the afternoon yeah so <sighs> all right uh what else bob would you ever make your own gaming handheld if given the opportunity yeah but like what does that look like like what how does that opportunity come up well i mean nowadays it's literally just like any android device so i can get like an android access to the android app i mean i've been trying to like you've seen these twitch streams where i'm yeah. trying to like tinker around with uh things to make it look like my own android device yeah uh but if like a it would have to be a company reaching out to me and being like hey do you want to help us like you want to give us ideas to develop a an android handheld yeah um and i can't imagine a company wanting to do that yeah you know uh will any comic runs you're enjoying uh i am absolutely loving the current uh wonder woman run written by tom king uh absolutely worth checking out uh the current batman run by chip Zdarsky. let me tell you something that was going downhill mighty fast over the past few months and then out of nowhere he turned it around and it's really good again oh so start reading batman again folks that was very good uh we also got some notifications here from kendall thank you for the seven months sup dads just tuning in looking good fellas Thanks, hey bro. doug thank you for the subscription 
Yo Jumzy. Thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. I think we're good on YouTube, right? Uh, yeah, we're good. Bob, since you were playing Ambernick last Sunday, did this happen to you? Buyers of Ambernick RG are reporting screen issues. Yes. I talked about it in the um, live stream. And I have a video coming out on Thursday about the Ambernick RG key. Uh, in the video, I show that there is a screen issue. Uh, so that's interesting because, uh, so this, uh, let's look at this article. I need to look at this. Buyers of the Ambernick RG Cube are reporting screen issues. So they told me that it was reviewers. Okay. They said we accidentally gave reviewers faulty units. Okay. And I, I suspected that it wasn't just reviewers. This article is saying that people who bought it are also getting the screen issue. So the issue is uh, really bad screen backlight bleed on the, on the edges right. of, of the screen. And it's very apparent on, on my review unit. Uh, and disappointing news, RGQs are receiving, uh, are arriving to customers. And there are multiple reports of batch one retail units having a light bleed. Okay, I need to amend my video because I already filmed saying that <laughs> I'd imagine that people who uh, bought this originally might might get issues. You guys got some wicked hand tattoos. What is the aspect ratio of this? One by one, Will. Really? 720 by 720. It's fucking cool. You want to see it? Sure. <laughs> All right, you go get that. I will man the talking to people in the chat. Uh, looks like an N-Gage. It does look like an N-Gage. I don't know if that had a one-to-one -one screen, though. That had a cell phone screen. So the pink one has the blue. Okay. The black one. Okay. They already sent me a replacement. I okay. got it uh, yesterday, I think. Jeez. Oh, uh, the side. There's a power button. I think you. I think that one should be on already. It needs to wake up. There it goes. SD card. You just open it. Yeah. It hit the back button. Okay. Okay. Let me see the screen. Uh, swipe down from the top. Does it say game mode? Uh, it says internet, force landscape, Bluetooth, nightlight. Let me see. Give me. I'll turn the other one on. Here. There you go. Okay. Okay. Missed out on the four-day passes, so I had to get a single pass. Yes, it was expensive. What are you talking about? For, uh, for a Long Island. Long Island Retro? We're probably only going to be there on, like, the Saturday. Yeah. This is a lot of stuff on our And way. we usually buy the pass day of. Yeah. We don't. What are they going to do? N not let us in? Okay. You guys ever play Crab Souls? No, but it looks pretty no, good. No, yeah. Oh, New York Comic Con. No, New York Comic Con, oh, yeah. We submitted a... That's another one. We'll probably only be there Thursday for that. Well, you'll probably only be... Well, it depends on what they... Yeah, I, for, yeah. usually they only let us in. Uh, the last year, they only let us the Thursday, right? I thought... Well, see, like an asshole, I bought my tickets. Yeah. So I think one year it was only Thursday, and then the last year it was, they, it was like for every day. Okay. I don't remember. We will either be there Thursday or Saturday. Yes. <laughs> is what I would say. On, yeah. on For New York Comic Con. That's another one where we're not guests per se. There's yeah. going to be no like meetups or anything. We'll just be walking around. And Comic Con, I'm, it's a lot bigger. And I'm usually there for like two hours. Like yeah. I get it all done quick. I'm not. There's nothing really much there for me. Oh, we'll be saying hi to Gavin Goodry. Oh, of course. Yeah. Friend of the show. Um. It's just loud. The speakers are insane. And yeah. I don't think... Yeah, so so that's something I, I forgot to mention also. Uh, lowering the volume does not change the clicks on the menu. I was going to say, like, this is at <laughs> mute. It plays GameCube great. Interesting. Yeah. I'm in uh, Game Boy Advance right now. Game Boy Advance is a little weird. I mean, it yeah. plays it just fine, and the aspect ratio scales. Yeah, it's got like the so that's a perfect three times scale. Right. But you're not utilizing the whole screen yeah. because it's a three by two is is what yeah. uh, Game Boy Advance is. Will you guys be picking up Donkey Kong regardless if it ends up being sixty dollars? I have no interest. Probably in playing Donkey not, Kong but I would I would honestly be disappointed if it was sixty dollars. Like I know Nintendo likes to keep the price oh. of their games high, but like. That's ridiculous for a remake. I'd be surprised if it's yeah. not sixty dollars. Well, what was Metroid? Sixty dollars. No, Metro remastered. That was like forty, wasn't it? 
I know the last Donkey Kong was sixty dollars. Right. That was the whole big stink. Everybody made a big stink. Metroid is, I think, forty dollars, yeah, and now it's on sale. Yeah, for thirty three ninety nine. Yeah, look at that. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else? Can't play that in bed when the girlfriend is sleeping with those clicks. Yeah, I gotta figure out. How to yeah, turn that off. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, I think I th- I think we're done, right? Okay. Did I miss anything important? Bob, how's the custom five pack controller working for you? Uh, I still have to make a piece. Um, I've I've been trying. I did finish the PCB for the uh, Gotcha SP. So I'm, I'm I'm making progress. Bob, what you think of the likes from Meverse on Twitter? They're fine. I, I don't know why people are mad. <laughs> people, everybody's showing the on Meverse when you like something, it shows it goes yeah yeah. And people are using that as like a meme on Twitter. Yeah. And that's that's funny. Yeah, that's funny. It's funny. That's cool. What's wrong with it? You know what's not cool? Hide in likes. Oh, that's don't, so don't dumb. Don't be ashamed of what that's you like. That's so dumb. That's yeah. definitely Elon liked something he shouldn't have, got in trouble. And then he's like, guys, why can people see likes? That's yeah, weird, weird waifu stuff. <laughs> yeah. But like, I like that. I think it's on the For You page. Mm-hmm. I like it that if a lot of my friends like something it'll say so and so and so and so like yeah. this tweet like i want that i don't know if they still do it but like you can just go to like type in the person's name in the url slash likes and it'll show you their likes oh my god yeah. that's so dumb all right thanks for hanging out everybody. thank you for tuning in thank you for watching us thank you for chatting with us as always the wolf Den podcast is every tuesday night at 8 p.m eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf Den and youtube.com slash wolf Den podcast if you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put the archive version up over on youtube.com slash wolf podcast so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want but if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as apple Podcasts, youtube Podcasts uh spotify audible.com no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms oh look at that wood streamer oh I bet hey he's getting off too bad he's gonna get a raid yeah uh, everybody go say hello to wood get him uh i'll be back on thursday most likely be a weird stream tomorrow but probably thursday i'm trying to get wood to play perfect dark um, you get that boy to play perfect. You might want to do it tomorrow. I broke it. I'd rather do it on Thursday. Would you break? Oh, that's, that's okay. I made that. <laughs> uh, bye, everybody. Bye. Say hello to Wood.